Okay, are we just ready to start? Because I'm recording uh, right now. I've been recording wait, for like oh, the past oh, couple we, minutes. What am, what am I missing? So what's what's up with the layout? Are we all okay. in like specific spots or? So uh, I will give a brief backstory to where everybody is and why everybody is there. So uh, welcome. This is the Guild Hall. Uh, this is where uh, the three of y'all, the titties out gang, as we've previously established. <laughs> God, uh, no. This is where you guys will um, uh, fulfill all your duties and live uh, as members of the of the guild, guild doesn't really have a name per se. It's you just know it as the guild, um, and the guild is uh, you can't see it on the map because I zoomed out. Or I zoomed it in a bit too much to fit in the grid, but um, it's essentially just sort of a compound with a bunch of bedrooms and a bunch of like living spaces and gardening areas and a big dining hall and all that stuff. It's a communal living space that's within uh, large stone walls. And uh, as members of the guild, you don't really need to leave the the borders of the wall because, you know, you got everything you need in here. And really, you're going to be out doing guild duties more often than being in the uh, guild hall. Um, you, uh, uh, what, fuck, how do I say this? You do not leave the guild hall per the front gate as the front gate is very is locked tightly shut and the only person who goes in and out of it is Bobbert O'Neill being the leader of the guild down here in orange. Um, this very, very sensual picture of Bill Murray. <laughs> um, I got a piss. But yeah, there's a bathroom in here. You j here, McJibbles, I'll put you in the bathroom. You're right there. You're taking a shit right now. Don't look at me. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so whenever whenever you guys need to uh, go on your next mission, you would go into the uh, chapel and the chapel doubles as sort of a, um, a dimensional rift, I guess. And it allows you to go to all different planes and realms that uh, Bobbert would request you to go down. Now, actually, that actually that brings me into a little bit of um, some backstory. Let's talk about Bobbert O'Neill. Because uh, he is a character that y'all will come to, uh, I hope to come to admire in uh, the future episodes of this. I so mean, Bobbert he's, O'Neill. He's already modeled off of Bill Murray. He's already got my support. Yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> oh, jeez, he's got larger. <laughs> so Bobbert O'Neill, very well-respected man, uh, well, respected enough to build his own guild. And there are uh, several guild halls just like these in uh, various different realms uh, just so that he has people in the guild as part of the organization closer to certain areas in space and time. So uh, when he calls upon you, you go relatively close in your realm. But he's a very well-respected man. Uh, there are many stories and many rumors about uh, Bobbert and how he came to uh, be the leader of this multi-dimensional guild. Uh, there have been stories about how he wrestled an owl bear down to the ground with his bare hands and then killed it later. Uh, there has been stories about how he's been able to uh, forge peace treaties between the orcs and the goblins, something that people didn't even know was even possible, right? Orcs and goblins famously hate each other, but he was able to make peace between the two races. So, hey, that's a cool thing that uh, Bobbert almost solely did. He had a, he had his group. He had a, a band of uh, adventurers from the guild along with him to help, obviously. But uh, being the leader of the guild, he was the one who did primarily the main discussion um and he's also a staunch environmentalist and he cares very deeply about uh living creatures in nature and preserving nature and uh and uh that's why that there is a garden inside of the guild hall because like a guild hall should be self-sustaining that's what he believes and you shouldn't need to uh tear away or uh tear down your surrounding environment just to just to live you know Y'all have these walls, you got this garden, you got this real nice place to live. You got a little stream, so you got fresh water. All kinds of things, right? Y'all are set. And even a well. I can see a well down there next to the uh, cartography room. Um, so, well-respected man. Obviously tries to do the best he can in uh, running said guild hall. Uh, and he's a tough motherfucker. So... You know, that's how it is. Uh, do you guys, as players, do you guys have any questions for the backstory or the guild hall or anything that we have going on, just so I can clear up any miscommunications? Where am I right now? You said that was like the sanctuary or whatever? You're in the chapel, which doubles whatever. as uh, a place to transport you to the to the different planes that Bobbert requests you to go down to complete his objectives. Or the guild's objectives, more realistically. Yeah. Doesn't sound like the functions of a chapel, but well, okay. 
that like Bobber's a rich man, you know? Yeah, well, no, he's not exactly rich. More so, he has a lot of influence, you know? Where's, uh, where's Bobbert's room? So he's rich. Uh, Bobbert does not live in the guild halls. He he has his own uh, he has his own staying area, and whenever he comes in, he comes in through the front gate and gives you all your requests, and then once he's done explaining the mission, uh, he will uh, leave out the front gate. Um, and you guys, oh. you, you don't need to leave. You're fine. Do we... It's this bed, the big bed. Uh, why do you why do you keep saying we don't need to leave? You you said that more than once. So who gets the big bed? Uh, that is up for y'all to decide. Uh, uh, Bobbert believes in running his guild halls very laissez faire. So uh, as long as y'all are maintaining the codes of the guild and maintaining that structure and making sure that everybody gets their fair share, uh, it doesn't really matter. You can you can have one person who is the most respected in the guild get the large bed. You could have like a shift thing going on where people shift in and out of the large bed. You can do a democratically elected thing. It doesn't matter. He's pretty laissez-faire on I that. Say it, I say it belongs to that cat that's on there already. <laughs> okay. I don't, I don't care about the bed. You keep saying we can't leave. I want to leave now. I never said you can't leave. You just you just don't need to because yeah, this, this, this guild is, hall self-sustaining. This, this guild hall is, you know, the Hotel California. You can check uh, out anytime you like. Yeah, it, no, that's that's exactly the vibe I'm getting. No, 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 it's fine, Jamie. <laughs> don't worry about it. Yeah, it's fine. Okay, I worry. already don't trust anyone. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. Maybe so, out to fucking chapel. Out to fucking chapel. Okay. So as a little bit of a of a scene as we're starting in, um, uh, Leo, you are out near the garden tending to it. You are the you are obviously. Uh, the green thumb of the group. You're the one who is able to actually do some gardening because McJibbles would uh, just ruin everything and just smash all the carrots and cabbages that you've been delicately growing. And Botok, Botok, he doesn't really mind either way. He's able to do gardening where it needs to be done and he's able to help you out in your in your duties of the garden, but he doesn't really mind any sort of uh, washing up in the, uh, in the communal bathhouse, bathroom, I guess of uh, the guild hall. And there are two separate uh, outhouses, I, I guess, toilets, we're gonna just say. So, you're washing up, McJibbles, uh, you're just kinda making dinner, honestly. Cause out of all the things that you can do, it's surprising that you are able to cook. So, every, every was surprised at your ability to cook, but you can cook in, in, uh, in this situation. So you're able My to- I died a long time ago. I had to take care of myself. Yeah, I had to take care of yourself, exactly. So. Y'all are doing your own duties. Botox is cleaning up. McJibbles is starting to uh, prepare dinner for uh, the three of y'all. And Leo is making sure that the garden doesn't die or that McJibbles hasn't stomped all over his precious carrots. At that moment, you do hear the, the grand gate of the wall of the guild hall creak open. And Bobbert O'Neill comes through the door and, he's, and he shouts because he has a grand booming voice. Y'all! Meet me in the gathering hall. I have a mission for you. Okay. Lodak will put down the right. file that he's been using to file down his cusp. <laughs> <Right. laughs> okay. Um, Let me stop cooking because this bastard wants something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, McJibbles. Oh, I'm on the table now. As a... Uh, what's, what's the word I'm looking for? As blunt as always. I respect that in you, good sir. You kind of look like Bill Murray. What's this about? I don't know who that is, but uh, I appreciate your compliment. I'm going to assume that that is a, a man in your tribe that was respected. So uh, Very funny guy. Very funny guy. Oh I, oh, I hope so. Anyways, so I come with y'all uh, with a request. I have a mission for you, should you choose to accept it. Uh, basically, what's going on is that there is this uh, long-forgotten uh, forest god... Now, this forest god doesn't exactly uh, appreciate humanity and other races uh, like orcs and goblins and, and elves uh, building these grand cities and these grand civilizations. And uh, they see all these civilizations as sort of a um, uh, blasphemy in their eyes. And so, long ago, uh, your ancestors and my ancestors uh, sealed away this great forest god in the hopes that you know uh, it, it would not threaten the very lives of all these innocent people out there because they're just trying to live their lives and trying to make ends meet these innocent people do not deserve to die but recently we've heard rumblings 
of said outer god uh, trying to revive itself and bring itself back into this uh, mortal plane we find ourselves in. So, what I need y'all to do is I need y'all to go into the forest where their power crystal lies. And I need y'all to smash it. McJibbles, I know you're, I know you're, I see your eyes lighting up over there. You ready to smash some stuff. I don't like gods. Mm, yes. I hope, I hope you're ready to smash some stuff. Uh, and, uh, Botok, I would, uh, I would hope that you would gather a little bit more intelligence of this, uh, new area you're going for, hoping to maybe study some more of these outdoor environments. Uh, at least I would hope so. I and, uh, no, say that again. I can just go to head. Oh, yes. Perfect. Perfect. And uh, Leo. Oh, would you prefer Liat? I never actually squared that out with you. Um, either one is fine. Either one is fine. Okay. Good man. Good man. I'm just oh, going to call you Leo. Leo. I'm just going to call you Leo. And Leo, uh, there are a wealth of, uh, there's a wealth of magical energy coming from this forest, as it is the domain of said forest god. So you'll be able to uh, study a little bit more magic and maybe hopefully find a, uh, find out uh why <laughs> what happened to you happened to you and he gestures as he says that to the uh your fully gloved forearm anyway um so yes i would hope that y'all would accept my humble request because uh, y'all are good people and there are, there are innocent lives out there that need protecting and if anything i hope that y'all would be willing to protect them and mcjibbles since you, since I know you don't want to do that, I would at least hope you'd be excited to smash some big ancient crystals. Do I get to kill a god? Oh yes, oh yes. Well, All right, man. you can't exactly kill this god, because it is, uh, it, it is merely trying to forge itself some influence on this realm that we live in, and it's doing so through these crystals it's growing in this forest. So if we crush those crystals, we crush her influence, or their influence, I don't exactly know. Doesn't matter. Y'all got questions for me on this mission? Nah, let's go crush some crystals. Yeah. All right. Paid for this. All right. All right. Good deal. Leo, I want to make sure everybody is uh, involved in this conversation. I'm, 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 I'm in. All right. Excellent. Excellent. I knew I could count on y'all. I knew I could. So, uh, whenever y'all are ready, you can, uh, you can prepare yourselves here in the guild hall that was so graciously provided to you by the guild and uh whenever you're ready you could head into the chapel and that will transport you over to uh the forest realm that you will be finding yourselves in for this mission this is operation smash that crystal can i get a hoorah i can go hoorah i appreciate you i appreciate you anyway i'm gonna go ahead and leave y'all know what's going on chapel's already uh, set up for y'all so you can just walk in there and once y'all three are in there you will be transported automatically together so no need to do any sort of incantations or anything like that no need to uh spend any spell slots or anything i'm looking at you leo <laughs> so once y'all are ready go ahead into the chapel make sure that you're ready to go and all three of y'all will be transported if there are no more questions i'll see myself out all right and uh Fucking Bobbert O'Neill walks out of the guild hall, out through the main halls of the of the uh, gathering hall itself, and you can hear as you're all sitting inside the gathering hall, you can hear the large gate of the uh, stone wall creak open, and then creak shut as he is as Bobbert is now off the premises. He still right. never answered how much we're getting paid. Uh, I was just going to steal some money from him later. Yeah. 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 All right. All is right. there anything, is there, are there any last minute preparations y'all want to make before we head into the chapel and go over to this, uh, this enchanted forest? Um, yeah. And so, uh, I assume we didn't eat. Can I pack food for everybody? Um, go ahead here. Let me see your uh, character sheet real quick. Uh, what do you have in there? You don't really have any items. I, yeah, we never actually set up any items for everybody. So, uh, oh, I, I set up items for me. <laughs> uh, we didn't set any items for for y'all. Oh, that's fine. So I got a few blank spots in that character sheet. I didn't know what to put. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're a special case because you're not actually carrying a weapon. So, you know. Yeah. Um, 
All right, so uh, yeah, go ahead, McJibbles. Uh, if you would like to prepare, uh, you can prepare. I'll, let's say you can prepare three quick and easy meals before you leave. One for each of y'all. Three rations, sorry. Yeah, three. Ra yeah, just three rations. Yeah. So McJibbles, if you want, you can go ahead and add that into your uh, item pouch on the bottom underneath your money. I Wait, should also clarify. Money? There's money. Yeah, Where's CP, uh, copper points, silver points, uh, oh, electrum, yeah. gold, and platinum. It's <laughs> it's pieces that point. Right. Oh, okay, yeah. Whatever. Yeah, well, whatever. Cabbage soup. Oh. Okay. Yeah, cabbage, cabbage soup. So you're preparing uh, some cabbage soup. Uh, hang on, let me. Do you have to put quantity or is like one? No, do, you just one. Day. You just have one. All right. You have one assume... serving. You have one serving of cabbage soup. All right. Uh... All right. Oh, zombie! You changed your fucking profile picture. Yeah, I, I, I didn't Botox. think about it until. Yes. Yeah. Oh, it's fine. Is, uh, I, I, I put myself as uh... Botox. <laughs> it's fine. Yeah. yeah. A I special, I a special so dish that. Uh, oh, that. rabbit tacos! That's a very yeah. lean meal. Yeah. 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 Okay. One more. One Leo, more. Leo, what you want to eat? Yeah. What you want to eat? Uh, I'm not sure. Keep in mind that y'all are like on opposite sides of the guild hall right now. Leo, what the fuck you want? Uh, Fucking Leo. Always like that. Fucking um, how about some carrots? Those those were ready to be picked. I'm gonna go pick them for you though. Okay, cool. <laughs> I can pick my own carrots. Whatever. Fucking Leo thinks I'm a fuck up carrots. I guess. <laughs> Stupid carrots. All right. Um, just go ahead and say uh, you you roasted some carrots, and that that is a meal instead of just regular carrots. Having yeah. them roasted feels like they would heal a little bit more, wouldn't it? So as far as uh, item goes, how much mm -hmm. can I carry? Um, I'll make a call on that when we get there. We'll we'll just play by ear in that case. I'm not one to uh, manage the weight of every single character in the party because that just sounds tedious. But Good, if you're, I don't want to carry a lot of shit either. If you're trying to carry 14 broadswords, uh, there's going to yeah, be a problem with that. Anyway, anyway. Botok, uh, how are you handling this? Uh, I'm, I'm, <laughs> you're already up there? All right. Apparently things okay, sir. Things is getting okay. Anyway, Jesus no, uh, Christ, Bot you, Botok. You do have a lot of items. Yeah, Bodok is um just th taking a general guess to look of the map that's in the cartography room. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, keep debating. in mind that map does not apply to uh, where y'all will be going. I know, but okay, I, it's, gonna, uh, it's still a map, and uh, wander wander around uh, around cop is part of Bodok's wanderer feature. Any any <laughs> any information uh, is good information. Yeah, just wanna check out the perimeter here. This uh, sure. This map. Nice little prison we're living in since we can't leave. It's not a prison. <laughs> Shut the no, fuck. no, it's, it's a it's nicest a, prison I've seen. It's not a prison. Man. I don't Fucking, know what you're talking uh, about, McJibbles. Old guy really doesn't want us to leave, but you know. No, that's no, cool. no, 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 no. It's not a prison. It's just a solitary uh, confinement. Uh, no, 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 no. It's fine. Can, can I can I get a key to the front door? <laughs> Why would you need that? Uh huh. Yeah, it's not not really a, a lot of a lot of ways to escape this place. I see. <laughs> you don't need, not, not okay. saying that yet. Not, not saying I'm going to. I'm Jamie, just saying. I, okay, McJibbles. I should clarify that uh, you willingly joined the guild, but you uh -huh. don't quite you don't quite remember how, when, or why. That's not sketchy at all. No, it's, pardon me. You do remember why it was. You're you're joining the guild to uh, uh, give you more resources to find the God Slayer. And eventually slay the outer god that destroyed your entire uh, your entire tribe, right? That is why you just want to siphon resources out of the guild, right? Uh, Botak, you're just looking. I believe uh, what we said in your backstory is that. What, what did we say in your backstory again, zombie? Refresh my memory. Sorry, it's been I, a long day. I, I, I don't think we really discussed. I just had you read it. <laughs> okay, so then here's what we're gonna do. I'm just going. I'm just gonna. I'm probably yeah. being a bad DM with this, but we're just gonna. I'm just gonna give you a reason. So oh, the no. reason why you joined the guild is because uh, as you are a uh, sort of um, explorer, oh, yeah. cartographer, ranger sort of vibe going on. You're not. You're not playing the class of ranger, but you're just that kind of vibe of explorer and uh, scouter. That's the word yeah. I'm looking for. Um, yes. 
you are taking this opportunity to join the guild and explore new horizons and uh, see new places and maybe meet some new people. Uh, and Leo, uh, the reason you joined the guild is because uh, Bobbert personally guaranteed you a... Uh, um, he would help you find out the reason why what happened to you happened to you. And exactly who did it, why they did it, and for what reason. That weird glowing fucking arm. All right, all right. So, if there are no more preparations to be done, if uh, nobody else has any more questions on what's going on, we Is should... Does uh, the guild hall have a name? Huh? Does the guild hall have a name? It's that we just guild hall. we only know it as the guild. Yeah, it's uh, it's only Chicago. A, it probably does have an official name, but we only know it as the guild. Yeah, at this point, you guys only you guys know it as uh, simply the guild. Uh, out of character question, how how hmm. well do our characters know each other? I feel like you know. I, um, I'm this is game, this but... is not a just met. You've had like a couple of weeks to get to know each other, but you're not exactly chums or best buds or anything. Got it. Got it. Yeah. So That's you know point. each other, but you don't know each other. Got it. All I know Got is McGibbles better stay away from my carrots. I already stomped all over those things. <sighs> oh, I just wish there was some more meat. <laughs> <laughs> I found a rabbit, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo, you killed a rabbit. You got some lean yeah. meat going on. I'm going fucking crazy in this place. I wasn't meant to live off of cabbages and carrots. Ah! <laughs> you know what? How, how's... Who's the best hunter here? Uh, as far as... Probably Botok. Okay. Okay. <laughs> but hold back. There you go. We're gonna being a hunter. <laughs> there you go. So we're gonna we'll yeah. find some meat while we're in the wild. Yeah, you can I'll hunt some exotic meats back. while you're in there. Oh, yeah. 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 And I can cook it when we get back. There yeah. you go. Yeah. 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 I'll make also, I, I didn't tacos. notice. I love that both Leo and Botok both had the wander back or the Outlander background. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> oh my God! Pardon me. Excuse me. All right. So is this gate to keep things out or keep us in? It's to uh, keep uh, enemies out, you know, because there there are many unsavory folk who wish to uh, see this grand guild be toppled. Hmm. Hey. Yeah, stay away from my vegetables. Well, hey, <laughs> they're not going to touch away. your vegetables. Your vegetables stink. You should probably pick them and plant new ones. All right. Watch the balls in the river. <laughs> you're just gonna, you're just gonna do a little bit of a squat and dunk your balls yeah. in the river about halfway and then come back up. I don't want to go on a mission unfresh, okay? Uh huh. You never know what you're gonna come into. All right. The short one? Everybody good? Everybody ready to go? Oh, there you are. All right. Let's pile in the chapel. Okay. And then we are going to real quick. We're going to go here, and now we shall start, uh, hold on, this. The transport, you have to drive 88 miles per hour. All right, so you guys are on the uh, bottom left of the map. I should clarify. So, hey, what? Uh, have, we'll has the, the map changed for y'all? No, it no, hasn't. Wait, was it supposed to change? Oh, pardon me. I thought it would change for y'all. Uh, how do I change yeah. it? The general thing where it says player, you know, big red tab thing. Just click that and drag it over to the. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Thank you. Thank you. Ah! There you go. Transported into a uh, into a grand open forest. That thing is huge. Can't control myself. Hold on. Oh shit! I forgot. Whoa. You can't control y'all. All right. Hold on. Let me just put my token on the board. Just delete the other botox. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh god, I'm so small. Yeah, make yourself a little bit bigger, about, about the size of these I squares. Can't. Oh, okay, well, shit, I'll make you a little bit bigger. Okay, you guys need to uh, put your tokens down on the board. I, uh, unfortunately, forgot to give y'all permission to make yourselves. There you go. There you go. I'll make you a little bit bigger, since you're the smallest of the group. There you go. And we're gonna make you... Uh, by the way, there is no grid on this map. I couldn't make it work properly, so uh, there's just no grid. Yeah. <laughs> anyway... So, y'all are in this forest. You're transported suddenly, and a, and a bright flash of light sort of washed over you, and wind uh, coming from the main, uh, what is it called? Uh, lectern of the chapel. It all just sort of pours out at once, and uh, in that moment, you find yourselves transported in this thick, gloomy, foggy-ass forest, right? 
thick layer of fog all across the ground. It's wet. It's damp. You can just feel the environment. It like weighs down on you like three weighted blankets on your shoulders at all times. And in that moment, you just, you find yourself in sort of a, a serenity almost. You feel the dread in the environment, yet nothing's really happening. Like there are, there aren't really any creatures per se. So, are there any... Oh, and I should also notice, I should also note that uh, there are uh, fruit hanging from the trees. And the fruit, I'm just going to drag this out on the field. They look about like that. Hmm. They got, they're about the size of an apple. Uh, and they got this nice yellow-orange gradient uh, with a nice bit of leaves. And they almost seem to shimmer a little bit if you manage to tilt your head in the right way and, like, focus the light on it in a, in a, di in a certain way. So... Yes, that's what we have going on. Do y'all have any questions before I continue on? Any observations or any actions y'all want to take? That's a cool apple. Oh, sure. I want to bite it. You want to bite oh, the sure. apple? I want to bite the apple. You want to bite the apple? All right. Um, let's go ahead. Let's just uh. There we go. Oh, okay. I sure I like this. You bite into the apple. I'm gonna live forever. It has a nice, uh, it has a pleasant, sweet taste with a little bit of a bitter aftertaste. Anything else? Not gonna die. No, you just you ate, you ate the fruit. It's got a nice, sweet taste, bitter aftertaste, but all in all, good fruit. Good fruit. Anybody all right. Want to pick some Did apples you just or something. Really eat the first thing you found. Yes. Yes, I did. All right. <laughs> All right. So, um, in this serenity, as uh, McJibbles is chomping into whatever fruit that happens to be, uh, you hear loud and, and, and uh, ominous clanking of armor off in the distance. Um, Botak and McJibbles. You know, all three of you, could you roll perception for me? Eight. Okay. Eight. Oh, there's sixteen and eleven. Awesome. So uh, McJibbles and uh, Leo, uh, y'all listen to the clanking of metal on metal, and you know, all three of you know that it is, it's the sound of armor, and someone is in a suit of armor walking towards y'all. Um, but uh, Leo, in particular, uh, is able to identify that there is only one suit of armor. Uh, just that the sound is echoing all around you within said forest. And it sounds like more than it is, but it, you can tell that it's only just one person in the armor. And uh, the the clanking of the armor is getting closer. Kthunk, kthunk, kthunk. And it's walking towards you, and you, you know it's walking towards you. It's getting louder and louder and louder. And out of the fog of the forest, a, uh, a man in a suit of armor emerges from the trees... Uh, kathunk, 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 kathunk. Each step louder than the last. And the, 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 his armor is just rattling against each other. It feels like that armor is about to fall off of him at any second, right? Just kathunk, kathunk, kathunk. And he walks in and he, wa he emerges from the tree line and he approaches all three of you. And what he draws his uh, punch daggers. Okay. And he just says, Leave this place. All right, that's the devil. I'm out of here. Who are you? <laughs> Leave this place. Okay. Where I, I would like to not respond, but look for a weapon. Okay, roll for perception. Ooh. Ooh. What is that final score about down there? That is an eight? Okay. Uh, you're able to find a large branch with which you have to hold with both hands and uh, you're able, uh, let's just say you gain a, a D6 of damage from this branch. All right. D6, okay. Yeah, you just get, you get a D6 that you're able to, that that's, that's your uh, damaging die you get from this tree branch. All right. All right. Uh, anything, right. any other questions y'all want to ask before, uh, for anything else? 
I'm just gonna hold we? on to the branch just in case. Can non non threatening. Non threateningly. Okay. The branch. He's just he's just standing there, kind of like yeah. he's not really moving with the wind. The armor, the guy in the armor is just sort of like still and and solid. Yeah. Yeah. Are there yeah. any like is there any sort of like gaps there where we could see what's under the armor? Roll for perception. I know I'm having y'all roll perception a lot, but this is important. I know. <laughs> this is okay. nature deity. <laughs> so Leo, your 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 uh what's the what's the term? Your eyes are darting up and down. You're trying to find any sort of like what's going on with him, and uh, you're able to catch a look at uh, at his helmet. You're able to see like the the uh, the gap in the helmet where the face would normally be. There is nothing there. No one is in, or seemingly no one inside is actually inside that suit of armor. Hmm. Well, that's creepy. Yeah. Yes, it is. Guys, I don't think this is good. This uh, this is a stand. Look okay, at that away. <laughs> As so, as y'all oh, as y'all are talking to each other, he just once again leave this place. I have a question, um, Le Leo. Uh, does Leo just notice this? There's nothing underneath, or does Leo actually tell us? Uh, that's up to Leo. Oh. Yeah. Uh, hey guys, guys, this guy doesn't doesn't seem to be a, a guy at all. You mean like a girl? Um, <laughs> no. Girl? I don't hear girls. No, it's more of there's there's he's more just a suit of armor it looks like or at least he doesn't have a head. Leave this place. All right, fuck um, it. free what, armor. What happens oh. if we don't leave this place? Ah, I want to take a swing at it. Free armor. You want to take oh, a swing? No. Oh, it's, no. it's free armor. It's free. All right. Leo, you uh, just said there's nothing Jamian, in there. I need you to roll uh to see if you hit. What am I rolling for? Uh you roll a d20. Pardon me. Here, let me open it. Hold on. I got I got to open up my document real quick. I like to imagine like Botog just learning. Oh, it is just you know like no one's in suit armor, and it's also just learning. he's just starting to begin lowering his daggers. Just oh, Leo said uh, a thing. Oh, uh, add your uh, strength modifier to that uh, real quick, McJibbles. Oh wait, can I just do? Uh... You can just press your. Wait, so just roll for strength or roll for strength? Yeah, sorry, sorry, I, I should have been more clear with that. Roll for strength. Cool, it's even lower. Okay. I'm gonna Wait, let you. I'm gonna let you have a. I'm gonna let you have a 15 on that one, because you rolled a 10 first. Hey, hold on. I don't know if I rolled the right one, because that was. That's strength save strength. is fine. Supposed to, yeah. Strength save is There's fine. A, it's it's fine in this situation. Like over here. Okay. Yeah, Jamie, and you don't have a weapon, so we're just we're playing by ear a lot. I have a branch. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know. You added your strength modifier to it though, so it's fine. I'm gonna let you have a 15 because you rolled a 10 and then you add your strength modifier to it, so sure. good enough. All right. So, uh. You want uh, McJibbles to run up and swing at the suit of armor? Yeah, let's go like uh Where do you want to hit him? Torso. Let's go with the torso. Torso? Torso? Okay. So uh, McJibbles runs up, like, daringly with his giant branch, and he swings right into the ribcage of the person in armor. The branch cracks and splinters, and it just pieces fly everywhere. The suit of armor remains unflinching, and its helmet is directed in your in your direction. And he says, "Very well. Roll for initiative." Okay, Leo. Now we can leave. <laughs> we can leave that. <laughs> Everybody, roll for initiative. Wait, where's my initiative? I forgot. God damn, Leo! It's on the fucking roll die roll today. All right. So. I didn't. Though it says. Oh, so, you should have had that one before. Shit. Ah. Uh, right click add turn, you know, on our things. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, right click. Okay, hold on. Yep. Uh, right click. Hold on. How do I do this? Leo, you still want to leave? Uh, honor leave. tokens. Just oh, okay, yep. okay. McJibbles, Botox. Uh, how do I add you? Right click. Um. Advanced. Add turn. There we go. And you rolled a 21. How do I change that? Here we go. 21. And then I'm going to roll for initiative on the suit of armor. <laughs> well, all right then. Add turn. I'm just going to make that a, uh, a two. Just because. Oh, actually, let me actually see this. 
Uh, yeah. Why okay. Why is Mr. So... before Botak? All right. I yeah. don't know why yeah. he's before Botak. Just, just, uh, I mean, the ranger would just let, take Botak. Just there we go. Up. Yep, there we go. Okay, cool. So, Very we well. got our turn order. We know who's doing what. Uh, so, directed at you. Leo, what is your action? Um, I'm going to back up. Okay. You're just going to back up? Um, well, I'm thinking I can't use my knife on this guy. Well. If he's not a guy. I mean, you never know. But all right, you just want to go That's ahead. You just, want to, you just want to. You just want to spend your turn, and you just want to back up. That's all you want to do. Yeah, for now. Okay. Also, wait to see how things go. Okay now. then. Oh, Let's hang see on. How things go. Ah, fuck. Roll twenty's fucking up again. God damn it. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. Let me just. Uh, I just have to kill my web browser, and then I have to reload it like a fucking Neanderthal. Come on. Uh. So, uh, uh, yeah. you, uh, had to move closer to, uh, to hit the armor, so I don't know if you're technically five feet with the Oh, guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's, like, right within five feet of the uh, suit of armor. Thank you. Good. So, yeah, he's right there. Anyway. This is all Leo's fault. Leo said it was empty. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, all Leo's yet, fault. Yet you heard the speak. armor speak and warn you to leave. It empty. I don't, I don't, I don't question Bluetooth technology. <laughs> anyway, so Leo, that's all you want to do. You just want to back up. So next is Botox turn. Well, it seemed threatening with that very well message uh, as it looked at McJibble. So mm -hmm. gonna come up to it. Okay. Because it's in space, so uh -huh. to Gotcha. I'm just gonna punch him with a dagger. You're just gonna punch yeah. him with a dagger. Where are you gonna punch him? Straight in. I I'm trying to aim for the neck area. Aim for the neck area. All right, awesome. Uh, go ahead and roll to see if you hit. Yeah. <laughs> oh, what'd you roll? <laughs> Whoa! Yeah. All righty. All righty. So, uh, Botak, what you do? Uh, you uh run up. You see all this happening. You see Leo sort of back away, and you think. Ah, oh, fuck. And you you need to get the first strike. The first strike is vital in battle. And so uh, what you do is you run up and you sort of plunge. You you have the uh, fist daggers, correct? Yeah. Yeah. You, you try to plunge the fist dagger, like, as close to the neck as humanly possible. And uh, you do very much land right where you need to. You, you actually manage to hit it so hard that you make a dent in the chest plate, and the helmet completely flies off. And everybody's... Oh. Everybody's uh, worry is fully confirmed. There is not a single living thing with inside that suit of armor. That you can see, like, um, you're so close enough that your, your fist is in there. You can kind of actually see inside the suit of armor. And um, you, you notice this, like, wispy, magical energy flowing inside the suit of armor. Uh, it's still standing. Oh, go ahead and roll for damage. Let me actually. Yeah, uh, hold on. Yeah. I like the magic. This is like as the thing is still like turning towards like, or you know, as it's like direction is still facing uh, McJibbles. So I'm just gonna like <laughs> use that little opportunity distraction. Yeah, to yeah, 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 yeah. Know, Just like fuck I it. Just, I need I need some fucking pencil or something here. You know, and because just... uh, uh, McJibbles is five feet from the target, I yeah. get my sneak attack from this. So all right. So that is five. So that's five plus 11. Plus that's 11. 16 damage. So you deal 16 damage to it. All right. It takes a solid hit. Um, that would be, give me a second. Uh, the, uh, that would be, okay. There we go. I just had to do quick, easy math in my head, and it took me a little, a little bit. The helmet does fly off. You're able to see inside, and you're able to see all this wispy, magical energy fly throughout it. But uh, the armor is still very much standing. I still have a bonus action. I'm going to use that for offhand. Uh, okay. Which, what what does that other, do? Other hand. It basically the same attack, or like, well, whatever I have in my other hand, just that uh, I don't get my uh, strength or, you know, dex bonus, whatever I want to use. Sure, go ahead. To, so you're, you're, uh, using your second, you're using your second fist dagger. Yeah. yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. Oh, my God. Ah, damn. God damn. 
All right. So, uh, as I, one I'm of your for the waste area, this for you're this aiming for the waste area. area? I, I'm All right. doing it like a boxer thing, like uh, you know, fucking straight for the jaw kind of punch motion. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. For the neck, and then this one's just trying to get to the side, just. No, all right, all right. Bodoc has a boxer like stance when he's, you know, with the punch hit. Gotcha. I see. So doing? yeah, you do. Uh, go ahead and roll for damage real quick. Yep. Oh, that wasn't supposed to. Oh, well, that wasn't supposed to have sneak attack. My bad. That was still like six. That's damage. supposed to be one damage. So seven damage. One. Oh, you deal only one damage. Yes. Okay. Because that because I don't get the plus five from my punch. My, oh, uh, gotcha, 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 gotcha. Yeah, okay. I only get it's a D four. Uh, zombie, do you not have three D dice on? I do not. Could you please turn that on? <laughs> Thank you. Fine. Uh, yeah, just remind me. Graphics. Yeah. Anyway, so yeah, as one fist is sort of like inside of its like quote unquote neck area or where the neck would be. Uh, you take this opportunity to take your other fist and try to get him right in the sort of the waist rib area, like sort of the underbelly. And um, uh, the armor there is a little, a lot tougher than you expected it to be. And your your uh, knife blade just sort of pings off of it. Uh, you have put in a sizable scratch inside the armor around the waist area, but it doesn't like go through, you know? Very much the armor set is still standing. Alrighty. I think I can... Never mind. <laughs> there you go. All right. So I believe that is all the actions you can take. Yes. Yep. Okay. Next, I mean, I McJibbles. Can still move, but <laughs> well, you could move. Yeah. McJibbles. I mean, that was only five Yeah, I want to pick up that helmet. You want to pick up that helmet? <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. I should uh, clarify. That the... was the reason for my original attack. I just wanted free armor. You just wanted free armor. All right then. So uh, the helmet landed eh, about five-ish, between five and ten feet behind where the suit of armor is. So you want to take your turn and make that movement behind him to pick up the helmet? So free armor and I get to run away from the fight? Hell yeah. All right, then. So you go ahead and move about here-ish where the uh, helmet would have would have landed. Uh, and you do... Uh... You know what? Here, give me a second. Let me let me see your character sheet real quick. Uh, bop, 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 how many actions is moving 10 feet away, I think the armor can make an opportunity attack. <laughs> Could I attack or no? I mean, you've already run behind him. Well, that's what I was asking. Like, how many? I don't know how many actions you can take. Uh, you can take an action, a bonus action, and a quick action, right? Free, free action. A free action. And, and movement. Right, and so movement. there's action. So bonus you've already action, reaction, reaction. The the va uh, yeah. What? Yeah. So Jamie, you've taken your movement, and your action okay. is going to be to bend down and pick up the helmet. That's what you want to do, correct? Yes. Okay, cool. Um, Roll for perception for me real quick. Okay. What is it? What does that come down to? Oh. Like a, oh, is it going to let me do it? Nope. Okay. It's, it's, it's dead again. All right. Give me a sec. Uh, roll a 19. Roll a 19. All right. 15 then. So four, yeah. 15 plus four gets a 19. All right. Cool. Um, in that moment, the, uh, the armor actually does take an opportunity to sort of, uh, he notices that you run past him and your back is turned to him. And, uh, he does take this opportunity to, uh, try to swing at you. Uh, but you are able to notice in that moment, uh, and you have to hop and you hop back a little bit and the armor sets kind of like here-ish cause it's taking a lunge at you. Right. Um, you don't get hit. But ah. it, it's, it's, what is it? It's perception is a lot higher than initially thought. Like it's okay. able to notice, it's able to notice what's going on. Uh, and you do, you do have a helmet. Uh, if you would like to use that as a weapon, yes. feel free. All right. You get a D4 out of that. All right. All right. So you've taken your action. You've done that. Uh, do you want to try to swing at it at all? Uh, Trying to think, how how far away am I? Uh, you're about uh, between five and ten feet. You, uh, let's just say you're you're about like let's say six seven feet away. Uh, close enough okay. to where you could like lunge in and 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 uh whack it with its own helmet if you wanted to. I would like to put the helmet on uh and headbutt him. Okay, okay. I'm uh, short, so I guess groin area or something. Sure, 
Uh, roll know. for strength. Roll with your strength modifier. A 13. Okay, oh, then. I just don't save again. I keep doing fucking... No, that's save. fine. That's fine. Strength save is, is, is just fine for what we're doing here. Yeah. Um, so that is a 13. Okay. So, uh, McJibbles plants the helmet on his head, and he thinks to himself, I'm a headbutt that motherfucker. And you're short, right? So you run up and you try to you try to headbutt it closer to the chest, the stomachish area. But uh, you're so short that you ended up go headbutting directly into the groin. And unfortunately, the uh, the armor just takes the hit and doesn't exactly move from uh, your headbutting tactic. And uh, the only thing that you get out of that is a little bit of ringing in your ears from the helmet sort of vibrating on your head like a bell. You're just wearing a big bell on your head at this point. That's cool. I just wanted to see if the helmet works. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. It does protect you. You don't you don't yeah. get hurt from it, but the armor set doesn't really get hurt from that either. All right. If that's everything that you wanted to do, now uh, it is yeah. time. Yeah. Now it is time for the armor's turn. Wait, I do have a question. How mm -hmm. tall is this thing? I don't know if you said Oh, that sorry. Way. I never actually clarified that. The armor set's about um the armor set's like 7 feet. It's a big fucking armor set. With or without the helmet? Uh, with the helmet. So without the helmet, eh, six and... Oh, hey, just to clarify, this thing is just like a headless fucking armor right now, right? Uh, it is armor because... with some magical energy flowing through it. So that's all we see. We just see yeah. like this weird aura where the head used to be or whatever. Uh, yeah. no, you don't really see yeah. that. You see sort of like, um... Like, it looks like the magic, like, because it's not really, it's like streams of magic. Like, multiple streams of flowing magic are just flowing throughout the armor set. And you can yeah. see the armor, you can see the, the, the streams kind of poke out where of the neck hole, where the, okay. uh, the head would be. And it makes oh. sort of a vague shape of a head, but it's not like a solid shape. Like, you can kind of That's, make it out. So, like, I, I'm asking because there's no head to attack. No. Or, okay, okay. That's all. There is no head to attack. Okay, we're good. Gotcha. Um, so the armor set is obviously going to attack uh, McJibbles since he's right in front of him and just conveniently uh, ran right into his groin. I should also clarify that you are like up, like up close and personal with this uh, armor set. Um, so it is going to roll for its slam attack. It's going to uh, try. It's gonna. It's gonna clasp its hands together and try to slam its both of its hands in like a fist motion down onto you, since you're basically below it. Um, and let me roll just a d20. D20 is enough for me. Uh, what is your armor class, McJibbles? Uh, fourteen. Fourteen. Okay. 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 Uh... Okay. So, um, uh, the, what is it? The armor set sort of brings up both of its hands, it clasps them together, and it's slamming them down right uh, into your direction, but miraculously, it misses, and, it land, and its, its arms land right next to you. You're able to uh, do a little bit of a, a side roll out of the way, and your, and your hands just sort of, uh, its hands just kind of slam down next to you. You don't take any damage, but you came real close. Now, I like let's go. I like to imagine more than just hit the helmet and put the helmet protected him. <laughs> nah, that yeah. would have been funny. And, and, and again, you know, just because like it doesn't match the AC doesn't mean it doesn't miss the attack sometimes. Right. But it hits the armor. But you know, it just hits the armor. That's the thing that's supposed to protect you. Right. Yeah. Uh, okay. But so he, the, miss, you know, he does saying. miss. He does miss. But I'm just saying it'd be cool the helmet that he put on to protect him. Or to actually did protect him. Unfortunately. <laughs> Unfortunately, this armor set has multi-attack, so it's able to make two melee attacks in one turn. Oh, you're and so, with, <laughs> with both of its hands clasped down on the ground, Marty, work for me. Go for somebody else. It reels its arms back in the opposite direction of you and is going in for a side swing. And you know what? Since you're on the ground and you're kind of in like a sort of defensive position, I'm going to allow it to roll with advantage. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. Your armor class is uh, 13? 14? 14. 14, gotcha. That very much hits. Uh, so, 
uh, it's it uh, its hands are still kind of clasped together, and it swings both of its hands in a sideways motion on you on the ground. It's sort of like kneeling over, and it's sort of just doing like a golf swing without a golf club in its hand. You know what I'm you know what I'm saying? Like everybody everybody understands the image I'm trying to play here. All right, cool. Yeah. I'm about to and, die. That's yeah, it. and it smacks you like right in your fucking stomach, like right in those hard as fuck red abs you got down there. And uh, it does. Here we go. Let's roll a d6 to see how much damage you take. Fortunate. Uh, you take four uh, points of damage, McJibbles. Gotcha. Of bludgeoning damage, specifically. Oh, and uh, you are blown back a little bit by that hit, so you're about eh, right here. You're, you're hit like ten feet back. Like, the motherfucker, like, gives you a good wallop. You said four points? Four oh, points, yes. Cool. Four points. I can't do math, but I'm not got it. All right, let me just let me just double check and see what your uh, HP total's looking like. You're uh, only, total's you got 16, 12? so I'm down to 12, yeah. Gotcha, you're down to 12, gotcha. Thank you. All right, next on the list. Leo, it is your turn. What would you like to do? Fucking run. Let's go. Oh, um, I also, uh, sorry to interrupt. I should yeah. clarify that once you, like, throughout this entire situation you're in, you can only see maybe like 30 to 35 feet out, and then the fog is way too thick for you to see anything past yeah, it. Yeah, I forgot about the fog. Okay. Yeah. 30 feet, you said? I'm still close. 30, 30 to 35, feet. around that range. Eh, I'll say 32 then. Sure. Anyway, Leo. <laughs> um, so I see all that's going on. And I see that he kind of wedged the helmet off, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go in. I guess we'll go in. You're gonna um, go in. All right. Yeah, with my dagger, I'm okay. gonna I'm gonna try to get kind of in like the cracks where the the armor holds itself together, if mm -hmm. I can. Mm -hmm. That's where I'm gonna be aiming when I go with my dagger to okay. see if I can't like start prying the da armor pieces off a bit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and roll. Dagger. See if you hit. Uh, what is that? That is a 17. Okay. So, um, Leo sees all this going on. Uh, where are you trying to stab, by the way? Um, I'd say kind of like maybe where, or I don't really know how armor works in real life, but maybe like around where the chest plate is me meeting up with like the arms or something. Okay. Okay. You're going to try to go for like a, like a stabbing motion in like the shoulder area. Yeah, or like like the side shoulder area. Gotcha, gotcha. So uh, yes, you do uh, run in, and you uh, your blade actually does manage to go in between the uh, the shoulder blade and the chest piece of the uh, of the armor set. Um, however, there's really nothing there, so it doesn't really do anything. Uh, and all and as as as, you, as the dagger gets plunged within the uh, shoulder blade. You uh, you can almost barely no make out the the faint, vague shape of a head, twist to face you. Lovely. Yes. <sighs> so unfortunately, he takes no damage in this situation. Yeah. Um. Okay. 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 Is there anything else you think you can handle? In the, you think you can do in this situation? Uh. There's nothing like fastening the armor pieces together at all. From what you can tell, like, no. Yeah. Damn it. It seems like the armor is just sort of floating next to each other, you know? Uh, like, it's not, like, strapped down. It's, like, being held together yeah. by some magical force. Oh, great. Miraculously, Botok was able to knock off its helmet, but, you know. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so, that's all you're going to do? Uh, I think so. Okay then. Uh, at this moment, your blade is still within the shoulder blade of the, uh, or between the shoulder and the and the chest piece in mm -hmm. that sort of area, like near the armpit range. So your blade is still there, and you're still sort of standing there as it's like kind of, you can tell it's facing towards you, even though you can't really make out a head shape, you know? Yeah. So yeah, that's that's what's happening. So Botok, your go. All right. Uh, question. Answer. Uh, do you allow the actual uh, flanking? flanking define uh, that's when uh, okay so I was gonna can I copy and paste the wall the now again? Yeah. Um, 
basically when two creatures are on opposite ends of mm -hmm. like a, another creature. Mm -hmm. So for example, like uh, someone would be heard bow talk. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I, I know, I know, what, I know what the tactic of flanking uh, is. I'm just saying, okay. what is it within the context of, of D and D? Uh, when a uh, creature is being flanked, they ha uh, the uh, other creatures have advantage on uh, the ones that are flanking have advantage on hitting the creature. So if I was over here, I, me and Leo would be flanking. This In creature. this specific scenario, let's say no. Okay. All right. Just yeah. turn his head for sixty. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he doesn't really have a head, so it's not but like you. It's not like you're yeah. facing the but back of was, him. But to know if I was here or and Leo was here. And yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Here, yeah. The Jibbles isn't really flanking with uh, me. And, right. Uh, yeah. Right. 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 You would have to have another creature like round. Yeah. Right. Like, but in this specific so. situation, let's say uh, that yeah. flanking would not work. All right. Well, I have Leo beside me, so I'm just going to move up to like, here and then just go for a side punch uh, in the wall. Well, I, I think it's facing Leo. Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. uh, where are you? What are you? What are you trying to hit? Like the it's like left side area, just just sort of like his rib, his ribs on the left side. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just, okay. Okay. Sure. Um. Okay. Are right, you're trying to uh, punch and stab through the armor, right? Yeah. Okay. Cool. I'm using my strength to just like force the place. Gotcha. In. And you rolled an 18. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, that does hit, thankfully. So uh, you run in and you try to do like sort of a boxing motion. You try to like do a low hook right into its ribs. Uh, the blade, unfortunately, uh, bounces off. However, you do deal like a sizable ding within the armor. It doesn't go through, but it does put a big dent if within it. So uh, it does hit. Go ahead and roll for damage. And I have Leo for the sneak attack, so. Sure. 12. So that's uh, 8, 12? Yep. Okay. Uh, that is a sizable hit. You can sort of like, it, it, it recoils from that hit. Uh, but it is, however, still standing. Bodok shakes it off and bonus so action. 12. That's offhand okay. attack. Okay. See so it. Go no ahead and attack. roll if that hits. Damn. All right, then. I'm aiming for the same spot. Now that I made a dent in there, I'm just like, well. You're just going to try to do it point. again? Yeah. All right. Yeah, go ahead and roll for damage. Four. A four? All right. So, uh, you go, you just go for the same spot yet again, right? And this time, it actually does puncture through with the second hit. Um, it's not a sizable hole, but you have made a, a puncture within. And, um, uh, with that puncture, you can see sort of the, like, magic wisps just sort of, like, flowing out. Like, uh, almost like you've popped a tire, you know? Uh, like, it's, like, it's deflating a little bit. Creepy. Um, it's struggling, but it's still alive. All right. Bodog just cracks his necks without, you know, hands. Just of course. <laughs> All right. So, next on the chopping block, McJibbles. All right. What actions do I have again? Um, I would like allow you to take an action to find, to perceive for a weapon. You're still wearing that helmet, so you can either headbutt again, you can take it off and swing it like it's its own thing. Um, I'll allow you to you, to do a D6 of damage if you wear it, but if you swing it, it'll be a D4 of damage. Um... Or you could take your take a take your action to uh, your main action to look around to try to find a weapon. Uh, but you said I have an action and a movement, right? Yes, those are separate. How, how yeah. far can I move? Uh, how? What is your speed? I don't He's know. He's a dwarf, so I think 25. 20, 25. 25. Okay. okay, so you can move roughly five squares away from where you are. And what's our visibility? About 35. Got a got an so idea. So about seven squares, basically. You got an idea? What what are you what are you doing, McJibbles? Anyway, basically anywhere you can move is what you can see too. The farthest yeah. you can move is yeah, pretty much. Basically, your uh, see all that forestry behind this piece of shit armor. Mm hmm. Uh. While he's not facing me. I would like to run past him, mm -hmm. quick head butt to the kneecap, and, <laughs> and go hide in the bushes. 
Okay. I'm not abandoning you guys, okay? Okay, Just okay, okay. Re Re-strategize. So, hey. where are you, Jamie? Move your uh, token, move McJibbles into the spot where you uh, you wish to move. So, not far past him. I don't know. I, I'm not sure exactly how far I go, but I want to be hidden by either the forest mm -hmm. or the fog. Just gotcha. just enough to be like it doesn't have to be way out of sight. Just enough right. to be invisible to. But the you offer. you need to do you need to do your attack first. Right, 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 right. Okay, so uh, roll to see if it hits and add your strength okay. modifier. Do it. Do it. Do a, a strength saving throw. Hmm, that is an eleven. So here is uh, what happens. So McJibbles, you get this idea. You think, okay, I'm tiny. I ain't got a weapon in my hand. All I got is a stupid fucking helmet. What is that gonna do, right? So. You are going to run behind the suit of armor. You're going to try to headbutt its knees to sort of just kind of knock it down because it's, it's staggering a little bit. So you're going to try to knock it off its balance and sort of make it fall on the ground, right? Um, unfortunately, in the deep fog that rests below your feet, you fail to notice how wet and slippery the ground is. So in your haste to try to uh, halt your movement and go back in for the headbutt on the guy's leg... You slip on some loose mud, and you morse, and uh, pretty much all you do is you slide into the bush. You're hidden in the bush just like you wanted, but you didn't exactly succeed in uh, in uh, dealing your damage. Fuck. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. Now you know who's in danger right now. Leo. Now that it is the armor's move. So. It, the vague shape of its head is still kind of locked on Leo right now. You can, Like, both of y'all can tell that it's just sort of, like, locked on Leo at this point. So it's going to try to swing at it. It's going to try to swing at him. So as it's recoiling, it takes a second, plants its foot down. Uh, Bo, uh, Botak. Uh, McJibbles kind of slides past him. He doesn't really pay it any attention because it doesn't matter. He plants his foot down, and he goes in for a uh, right hook right into uh, your uh, rib cage, Leo. So I'm gonna go ahead and let's roll here. 10 plus, okay. What is your AC, Leo? 13. Mm, okay, okay, perfect. So um, it's trying to get at you with the right hook in your rib cage, but uh, you are able to see this coming. Uh, you notice, uh, what, what, what you do is, uh, in order to make this proper, in order to make this dodge work, because you are going to dodge out of the way, you let go of your knife, and you do a little bit of a hop back. And it just, it, you only hop back a little bit, just enough to where the fist sort of grazes by your, uh, your, uh, your abdomen region. So you don't get hit, but you're down a dagger. So, it doesn't, it, it, it isn't able to hit. But what uh, the armor then does try to do again is it tries to go for another swing because of a multi-attack, so let's just go ahead and roll again for that attack. Seven plus, one. Well, okay then. Same thing, pretty much happens again. It goes for another hook, you are able to see this coming, and you do another hop back. Barely, again, just barely manages to scrape by you, but uh, you make it out of this one with uh, intact ribs, luckily. Um, And then, do, 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 yeah, okay. So, it uh, does not do anything else. So, next up, Leo, it is your turn. Um, let me see. Am I able to, like, would I be able to, would I be able to kind of recognize, oh. be familiar with what that magic would, could possibly be? Um, let me look at your character sheet real quick. Well, because like, like I don't have any like magical knowledge like any of those things, but right, like right, I right. do technically have magic, right? Right, you do. Um, let's go for an Arcana check. Go ahead and make an Arcana check. Uh, this one. Oh, I'm not smart. Oh boy. All right, what'd you do? What'd you roll? A seven. So, uh, in that moment, you try to sort of go in through the recesses of your uh, the creases of your brain to try to um uh see if you recognize that uh that um magic that's flowing within it 
Uh, you can't quite place it, but what you do know is that the color of the wisps and streams that are flowing throughout this armor and around this armor now that the hole is sort of punctured in its side is the uh, same color as the magic that you use. The exact same color, the exact same shine, everything. It, it looks, in color, the exact same. So that is what you notice. Purple, guys. Yep, it's got like a purplish, bluish sort of flowing magic. What the fuck is purple? I'm color blue. No, I'm kidding. I would, I would imagine, I would imagine it's the same two tones that are in uh, Leo's hair. That's what I was envisioning. All right. Hmm. Okay. So, I'm, I'm gonna count that as a, as a, as a free action, so you can just, you can, you can still do your movement and everything. Um, would my Glove need to come off to use arms of Hadar, because it's uh, not like a lightning one. Yes. Uh, in order to use your magic, you would need to um, take off your glove. Uh, I'll allow you to use a uh, bonus action to do that. Uh, I guess he's like right there, isn't he? Oh. Yeah. Oh, uh, sorry. Like I right uh, moved yeah. over there. So yeah, he's pretty much uh, right in front of you. Okay. Well, I don't have my knife. Anymore. Um, and I try to like pull his armor off from like maybe where the hole is made more um try to pull it so like what okay like, I, sh I should i should clarify that the puncture within is not big yeah. enough for like a hand to slip in okay. you know yeah it's big enough for a knife would, blade to slip in yeah, yeah. <laughs> would there be like like a crack in the armor that i could reach through no it is a clean like just puncture well, I meant like between pieces or something. Between pieces? Uh, not that you can tell. Yeah. Okay. Um. Hmm. No, I do have another dagger. Uh, you do. Um. So maybe I'll try to make another puncture hole, maybe on the other side. Okay. Sure. Go ahead and uh, roll I to see if that my, hits. My left dagger. That is a fourteen. So let me just double check. Yep. Yeah, okay. So. Um, uh, when it Look. swings at you a couple times and you do that sort of bounce back motion, you're sort of dodging it. You take this opportunity as it's reeling from that punch to sort of go in with your with your uh, other dagger that you have to try to like. Yeah. You said you wanted to go in and, and stab at the at its other side of its rib cage to try to get another puncture yeah. in, right? Um, unfortunately, your blade tings into it. You do manage to land a hit, but like it tings off of it, so you don't really mm -hmm. deal any damage to it, and uh, the armor set is unmoving is unmoved by uh by mm -hmm. this attempt to get into its uh it's a uh, thick armor plating all right so uh that's everything then all right next on the list botak as free action botak will speak botak Focus will speak on. yeah okay go ahead focus on me tin can uh, it seems like your words do not, um, they, they don't go through. They don't go through. <laughs> I don't what care. Did you, what did you say? I said focus on me, Tin Can. Oh. <laughs> All right. uh, your words don't uh, get through to it. It doesn't really react. That's okay. I'm just yeah. going to punch it again. Uh, this time for its left kneecap. At the back of the knee. Back of the knee. The gotcha. Yep. Okay. Go ahead. Make a roll. See if that hits. Because Leo is within five feet. Mm hmm. All right. All right. Uh, roll for damage. That does hit. Roll for damage. All right. Cool. So, um, uh, Botak, what you do is you sort of, sort of, uh, circle around, try to get it at the back of its knee. Uh, it does connect, and your your knife, your uh, your dagger fist plunges directly into the knee, and uh, you actually punch it so goddamn hard that the uh, the front bit of the kneecap sort of blows off of the front. The rest of the armor is still there, but it's just the front bit. So there's like a little hole between both of the um, the shin guards and the thigh guards. Uh, again, you can see that there is nothing in there besides the magic. And uh, you make that one puncture through and all the magic just sort of flows out of it in a, in a grand explosion of energy. And you can hear like this faint screaming, like this guttural, like, ah! as it as it all flies away. 
Uh, and it's it, do, it doesn't sound as audible as uh, what I did. It's sort of like a, an echoey, sort of whispery kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, and in, and uh, after it recoils from the damage, you hear that scream. You see all the magic flow out of it. And the armor stops moving. It shakes a little bit. And all the armor falls to the ground. You guys succeeded. It falls over. I, I just do like the weight, like, you know, like I just like recoiling from a punch, you know, just the shake of the fist, the like, ooh, that was a good punch, you know, kind of. Yeah, you know, like yeah, the, yeah. You know, like, hurt my hand, kind of, but not really, you know. Kinda. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So all of the armor is falling apart. It's all separated. Um, it uh, It is not moving on its own anymore. Everyone's still alive. In the bushes. You know, I'm starting to think they don't want us in this forest. <laughs> okay, that away. All right. So we're here to kill some sort of god. Yeah. So. Uh, oh wait, here. Let me go ahead and uh, edit that turn order real quick. Delete everybody from it. All right. So, um, the ah oh, shit. Give me one second. Sorry, I have to kill my browser again. I'm thankful that the browser is not dying during battle sequences. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone's still alive. You're still okay. Yeah, I'm just chilling in the bushes. All right. Get out there now. So. Things are no longer moving. Uh, I, I just kick it a I'm, bit. Yeah. I'm out the yeah, bushes ground. All right. So, McJibbles and Leo, after that miraculous... Uh, uh, swing with death. Let's just go ahead. Can I like add a, like a skull icon to it? Uh, you can. Uh, when you click it, the question. The, can I keep deaths. the helmet? <laughs> yes, <laughs> McJibbles. Okay. You can keep the helmet. I have added the helmet to my items. Oh, sure. Yeah. Usually, usually, how I mark things dead is uh with the X. Oh, with the right, X. Uh, okay. Yeah, the red X. Yo, yeah, like that. Can, we, can, can we like loot this corpse oh, okay. or something? How do I at? Hold on, give me one second. Um. Oh it's God damn it! God damn it! It crashed again. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, Cameron, man, uh, you should get a better computer or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, maybe, gonna, maybe you should try switching to Linux or something. I'm gonna maybe try that, doing this. I'm gonna, Linux, dude. I'm gonna try <laughs> doing this on Firefox next time. Maybe that'll work better. Probably. Zombie, yeah. zombie, is roll twenty always this bad? Uh, what are you using it on? Uh, Vivaldi. Chrome, it's it's Chrome based. Okay, uh, I, I use Google Chrome and I don't have issues with crashing. So. Okay, well maybe I'm just gonna have yeah, to I'm use. You know what? Maybe I'll just use Microsoft Edge. Oh no! Gross. I will I will fucking leave this campaign. Maybe it's, maybe it's the Linux <laughs> issue. Edge users, ew. Yeah. So, uh, you uh, McJibbles, you would like to loot the corpse? I mean, you don't want to let a good corpse go to waste. Sure. Um, I, mean, I also don't want to be like selfish because I already got the helmet. Feel free to jump in, guys. So I got got the helmet already. Um, uh, 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 go ahead. You know what? No, I'll just let you do this. As you're looting, um, there is a leather belt, uh, and uh, on the belt there are uh, five vials with uh, various colored liquids within them. There are three. Uh, there are three vials with red liquid. Uh, one vial with a uh, green liquid. And one with uh, an orange liquid, um, and that just sort of falls off. And that was that was on the um, that was sort of on him, but uh, I guess nobody ever really noticed it or whatever. But uh, yeah, you do find a small uh, like side belt, like pouch thing with five vials on it, and uh, this contained those vials with those colors. Um, if you oh. would like, you can make a check to see if you can identify it. McJibbles. Me? Yeah, McJibbles. If you would like to identify it, let me br I'm bringing up your character sheet right now. Go ahead and make a um, you know what? Make a medicine check. See if you can identify those those uh, various liquids. Uh, let's see. Nine. A nine. Um throughout your time of adventuring Red usually means it's a healing potion, usually, uh, and you have no clue what the other two are. All right. Um, anybody needs some medicine? You know, she's got a got a battle. 
I think you're the, I think you're the only one who took a hit actually. No. Right, fuck it. You know what? Uh let's let's take a swig of one of those red ones. You want to take a swig? All right. Make another medicine check. Boy. Oh god. Hey, Leo, I offered you some, okay? No, you just took a swig. No, he did. He did offer you some. 15. All right. So McJibbles, you uh you offer some of the medicine medicine quote unquote to the other party members and uh, they just kind of look at you and look at the medicine and are just kind of like confused like what the, why would you drink that what we don't know what this is and you in your frustration decide I right, fuck you guys I'm gonna drink the red one and so you 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 uh you pop off the little cap of one of the uh red ones and these are all about about as big as a shot you know there's not a lot of liquid in them and you you basically just throw it back like you would throw back a shot and Ooh. um uh, what were the color of the bottles again? It was three red, one green, one orange. Yeah. There's, there's three red ones. That's why I picked that one. Oh, right, you, well, there's, oh there's like multiple of them. So yeah, if, there's, if, five of, if, there's five in yeah. total, three, three of which red. are red, one is green, one oh. is orange. Best case scenario, if it's something good, it's two more for you guys. So I'm All right. Just taking one for the team. So right. you throw the potion back, or the liquid, I should say, um, and... Uh, you uh, you bring your head back. You sort of just look around. Nothing really happens, and then you feel this great burning pain right in your chest, and the pain is so agonizing that you fall to your knees and you're grasping your chest and you're screaming ah ah, and it hurts. It hurts so bad. After just a couple working. after a couple of uh, after like eh, let's say 15 seconds of of that uh, on the ground. Uh, grasp, grasping at your chest, uh, you're fine. You actually heal to full health. Oh yeah, that's what I'm talking all about. All of your wounds from that's the what I'm talking all about. of your wounds from the battle, that great big bruise in your chest, gone. Whatever cuts and scrapes you uh, you uh, you've taken from the battle, gone. They all close up and they all heal up, and you are just fine. A okay, back at peak peak condition. All right, see, took one for the team. So we need to split up those vials. So you're good. Leo, she get one, and Bolts actually get one. The red ones. Okay, cool. Sure. So, uh... Hey. See, what's the other one? Green and, uh... One green and one orange. You guys want that? It's sort of like a... I should I just describe this a little better. So, it's a little vial, about the size of a shot, and the top of the liquid is, like, a bright orange color, and it sort of gradients down into, like, a deep red hue. Like, the deeper you get into the liquid, the more red it becomes. And, uh, no matter which way you hold the vial, the red is always at the bottom. <laughs> oh, the orange red vial, and there's a green one. Yeah, and there's just a regular green one. Yeah, so two reds, one orange, one green, basically, is what's All left, because right. McJibbles took a swing yeah. at the red Yeah, one. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I would have rolled to see how much it healed, but McJibbles didn't really have a whole lot of health, and I'm just decided to a, let him yeah. take his whole health, health, health yeah. bar back. Right. So how do you guys want to do the rest of the vials? Uh, could I could I take a look at them, Mc, McJibbles? Yeah. Well, McJibbles. I, first, first of all, I think both of them should have one of the red ones. Since sure. Two more. Sure. Yeah. Okay. So okay. Go ahead and grab one Thank of those. So that just leaves Thank an orange you. and green one left. Mm -hmm. yeah. I feel like I feel like Leo should have them. Both of okay. them. Okay. I. Yeah, that's. Fine. I already I already took a gamble with the red one. Okay. Okay. So McJibbles, you hand all you hand three of the vials to Leo, and you hand the other, uh, the third red vial over to uh, Botak. Thank you kindly. <laughs> I like how you put healing potion question <laughs> mark. It's gonna hurt like a bitch, but I put red potion for me mine. Okay, that's yeah. funny. Uh, no, uh, I should mark his name. Healing potion. Um, and uh, what is it? Uh, Kate, you said, or excuse me, Leo, you said that. Uh, would you you would like to uh, check those yourself? Yeah. Okay, go ahead and make a medicine check. Proficiency in that. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Okay. So, um, in your time of uh, studying herbology and the and the mixture of concoctions to create uh, healing wares and poisonous wares, um, you are able to deduce that the and based on what happened to uh, McJibbles, it's safe to say that the red ones are healing potions. Um, you're not exactly a hundred percent on that, but you're like a ninety percent on that. Uh, that those are indeed healing potions. But they do hurt like a bitch for about 15, 20 seconds while they're doing their thing. Um, uh, the green potion, uh, historically, 
uh, from what you've studied, green potions usually cure poison and cure ailments of that nature. Um, and you're a, you got a solid like 80% on that. It's like, I've never seen any green potion that doesn't, that doesn't cure poison or at least cause poison. So, um, you can tell that that has a, a relationship to poison, whether in the, uh, applying or curing of which you're not a hundred percent on, but given that there are healing potions, eh, it could be. And the, uh, orange one, the orange and red gradient one, um, you, you notice it and you do see flakes of, uh, plants in that, that you know will, uh, will, uh, um, help you in, uh, flaming, uh, environments. It would help, uh, reduce the effects of flames on the body. So, um, yes, you're, again, you're not a hundred percent, but it's like, eh, could, could be a flame retardant potion, could not be, I don't know. Yeah, they're better in Leo's hands. <laughs> yeah, he was at least able to uh, identify what the other two were. Yeah, I would have just drank them. <laughs> I would have just poisoned you. <laughs> poisoned. Right. Poisoned. Oh, I could have mixed the green one in my cabbage like, soup. <laughs> oh, I actually would have loved to see that. Okay, so now that the suit of armor is crumpled onto the ground, uh, you guys have acquired your... Uh, your four potions and uh, McGibbles is at full health again. Are, is there anything else y'all would like to do in this situation? Uh, anything else? <laughs> proceed forward. This? Proceed forward. All right. Yeah. Y'all yeah. are going to proceed within the forest? In we got the, in the, the, the I got a helmet. This bitch thrilled us to go away and crumpled like a fucking piece oh, yeah, of we're, armor we're, that we're cocky now. Let's no longer was go. possessed or something. <laughs> we can All literally right, take anything in this forest. We have a mission to do here anyway. We're not just going to yeah. leave because someone said it. Also, right, I don't though. know the way back. So. Yeah, okay then. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I don't know where, fucking, get back. Wait I don't know where the chapel is. I'm not sure how to get back, so we might as well go forward. Yeah. I don't think the, portion, uh, the portal is going to open to get back to the guild <laughs> until we complete this mission. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Hey, how <laughs> do you make up. that little arrow appear again, zombie? Uh, which arrow? The uh, when you were doing your movements, you were you were doing like a oh. little arrow. How do you do like that again? This? Oh, yeah. this or like uh, yeah, what the, you were just doing. Um, there's a ruler tool uh below the spyglass, or at least for players. Oh, like, okay, 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 okay. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, now um, now I know. I don't so. think it's kind of accurate considering the offset of the board. Hey, eh, sort of. Eh, it's close enough. It's close. Uh, enough. but um, then yeah, just holding down a token, just you know, right click, right click to make it you know go like this yeah so um oh shit that's cool yeah so it, uh what is it i i do want to reiterate the fog in uh, in the forest it is quite thick um and the you know you can only see about like 30 30 to 35 ish feet away right. and the fog gets too thick to where you can't even see anything past it um which uh let me actually double check that is about well, let's say that far away. You can see that far into the forest before it all just becomes shrouded by this thick fog. Y'all saw my purple arrow when I did that, right? Yep. yep. Okay. Yeah. Cool, 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 cool. So, well, yeah. Path leads down here, but... As Botox kind of points to that general direction. Sure, sure. Well, where are we, where are we trying to go? That's a good question. Cause, I mean, uh, there's a path. Yeah, that might be path. a good place to start. Do we follow Maybe. Where it came from? What, what path are you talking about? Well, the vague area what? that doesn't have trees. You can see yeah, if yeah. we hit trees. That's what I'm saying. So, how do you want to get over there? Because uh, we can, we can go straight, go around. Yeah, straight. Well, if we can't, we can't see very far. Mm -hmm. yeah. If there's trees blocking our vision, we'll see even Got even down, less well. far. Mm -hmm. I think. Maybe. So, but down. the barber sure looked the trail of woods. Oops, and out. We could, wherever it came that. from, might be oh. something interesting. Maybe Zombie, when you it. talk like that, I cannot hear what a single thing oh, you say. Oh, fuck, dude. I have to change Brodog's <laughs> accent. Just just talk with your normal voice. It's fine. Because we can go <laughs> yeah, down. I, I love doing goofy voices. <laughs> Do a louder one. <laughs> Do a louder uh, one. There you yeah. go. Well, Botox more southern now. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm wondering, maybe we should follow where this armor came from. 
maybe in the woods. I can probably track. It should have left footprints in this muck. Even with the fog? Sure. Okay. Uh, what is your, uh, hold on. Let me, let me, let me check your character sheet again I mean, real quick, zombie. I'll, I'm down with following Botak. I, I, I'm proficient in survival. Okay, okay. Not okay. good, but, you know, I'm proficient in survival. Sure. Survival's all about tracking and okay. stuff. Okay, make a, make a survival check to see, uh, how well you can follow those, uh, footprints. Okay, okay, that's pretty good. So, uh, you do notice... Wait, we, before yeah. we take off... Everyone got their weapons, right? Yeah. Okay. Let, let's just assume that, yeah, uh, Leo uh, was <laughs> able to take his dagger back from the pile of armor. Cameron is 100% a bastard, and <laughs> we'll get into a fight like an hour from now, and you'll find that Leo only has one dagger. <laughs> just, just say it. It's the first episode, Jamie, and yeah. calm down. I know you, though. <laughs> okay. We're, we're all learning, or at least some of us are learning. Yeah, yeah. We're, 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 we're all learning. Lenient. We're learning. I'm, I'm allowing so, y'all to be lenient. Yeah. All right. So, Looks like there's some uh, tracks around here. And the the tracks do go uh, deeper into the forest. I was kind of right. Armor does leave a heavy imprint compared to a more... Uh, oh, yeah. No. Loud. Other. Uh, <laughs> what? Leo, Leo's just standing there kind of spaced out like, what happened? What What's going on? <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. The, the guy was loud, so it makes sense that he is heavy. Yeah. yeah. Considering your beast, so. well, prints are a size of them, and, well, very, uh, Zombie, you need to speak up, bro. I'm sorry. Motherfucker. <laughs> Motherfucker. Hey, Jamie. Or, excuse me, Mick Gibbles. What's up? Make a perception check. <laughs> oh, fuck. That's not good. It's a 12? Okay. I, I think we could follow these uh, trails probably to where it came from. That lead us okay. something interesting. All right, then. Also, um, what we're trying to find. Uh, lead, lead the way, Botak. Okay. Botak, uh, Botak, Botak make Botak. another survival check to follow the tracks. All right. Ooh, Ooh that's a good roll. All right. So. Our armor um, is easier to track than, you know. This is true. So uh, I'm just going to uh, play out exactly what has been uh, going on uh, just for the sake of setting the stage. So, Botak, you do find your way into the middle of the forest. Uh, the further down you go, the fog gets thicker and thicker and thicker, and you guys can see less and less the further you go in. Uh, so much so that the fog now only reaches about 15-ish feet in front of you. Um, and you're, you are following these footprints, but after a while, the footprints just kind of stop. And you turn around to try to follow the prints back to where they came from. They're gone, too. So all the prints are just gone and you're in the middle of this dense forest and there's really no direction, you know, in play. Um, and the, the prints are gone, the fog is thicker, and uh, each tree looks about the same as, uh, as one another, you know? Uh, so cool. that's, that's where uh, y'all are at right now. Ah, uh, shit. Uh, so, uh... Huh. We're in the same to stop here. <laughs> Wait, Just... wait for the fog to let up, I guess? I, I don't think it's going to let up, buddy. I mean, either that or keep going. Want to keep going? Up. Hey, it uh... might let up, it might not. Who knows? Hey, Leo. Yeah. yeah. Mm, make a perception check. Okay. okay. Gotta find it. I wish the perception button was bigger. Hmm. I can never find it. Maybe okay. if your perception was higher, it'd be bigger. <laughs> So, uh, as you are, uh, walking down these paths, following Botak, just kind of in your own head, kind of, of what's going on, and you're thinking about all that kind of stuff, you're thinking about, like, the colors of the magic, and it's like, is that related to me in some kind? And it's like, eh, no, that probably isn't. Um, as you're walking down, and you look around at the trees, and you're just kind of looking at them, kind of admiring nature, uh, you notice that there is a rune inscribed within the tree that you, uh, stop and look at. Um, can I investigate? Hey guys, I think I found something. Yeah. Uh, can I can I investigate it? Yeah, may I make an investigation. What kind of investigation? Uh, give me one second. Let me look at your character sheet. Um, let's say another Arcana check. Okay. Mm, a fourteen. So, um, 
the rune itself is not immediately identifiable, but mm -hmm. um, you look behind, you look, uh, your, your attention is brought to behind the tree, to another tree that's kind of like mm -hmm. a few feet away from it, where there's a different rune inscribed in that tree. And that rune has like a, you, you notice like a, like a faint, like really, really faint glow to it. As I found something else. Oh. Um. Where'd okay, you I'm find? Gonna, I'm, I'm gonna walk towards the rune, that the second rune, the glowing one. Gotcha, gotcha. Um. Really make cool an here. arcana check. Another one. Oh, I almost hit the wrong one. Okay. So, um, you walk closer to it, and you notice it's getting a little brighter. We're talking like 1% to 2% brighter, right? Mm -hmm. um, and you, uh, you bring your hand up to investigate it a little bit. Uh, Leo, which hand would you like to bring up to investigate the tree? Bring up the gloved hand. The, the gloved right hand? hand? Okay. The closer your gloved hand gets to the rune in the tree, the glowing does get brighter, but not too much mm -hmm. brighter. But you do notice that there is a, uh, a a correlation between the closer your gloved hand is to there is a slight increase in in glow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, can I f look around to see if there's any other runes in the area? Yeah, make a perception like check. If there's a path, make a perception yeah. check. Oh, come on. Oh, guys. Mm. Okay. So okay. Yeah, it's all that almost nat 20. Okay, okay. So, you're kind of looking around. Uh, you, you, you see that... Uh, and, oh, I should clarify, the glow within it is actually yeah. the, the carvings of the rune itself are yes. glowing from underneath the tree. Um, you're looking around, and you can't immediately identify any more runes on, on any other trees from where you're standing. Mm -hmm. Um. Uh, the fog is just kind of like so thick yeah. around you. You're not noticing any other glowing. Is is what yeah. I'm trying to say. But the okay. rune that you are standing in front of is got a, like a faint glow to it. Yeah. Hey guys, there's something up with these runes, but I don't know what. Mm -hmm. Punch it. Um, I'm gonna say maybe not. <laughs> Punch it. I mean, punch it with the glowing hand. I don't know. Well, let me see. I might be a little bit familiar with uh, these runes, but I may not. Guys, guys, I'm an expert in magic. Punch it. Both of y'all make an arcana check with disadvantage. Fair enough. With disadvantage? Right? Yeah. 13. 13 and 8. Uh, Botak, it's not immediately recognizable to you, but you also notice that there's that that there's that correlation the closer leo's hand gets to the closer leo's completely gloved arm gets to it the there there is a slight increase in the glow uh mcgibbles you don't notice a thing and you just want uh leo to punch it with their with this, with uh, his gloved hand punch it looks like there seems to be some sort of reaction with your uh glove what is that too <laughs> I, I don't think it's the glove though hmm <laughs> Wait, hold on. Uh, we have a. What's the current conditions as, as far as visibility? Visibility, so uh, 15, 20 feet. Let's just say 18 feet to put a, a hard number on it. Right. Is it just dark? No, or it's it's foggy? more like a, it's more like a, a glowing, almost bluish sort of um, uh, aura around you. Like it's a baby blue sort of a fog color. It's bright enough to where you can like see what's not in fog, but the second it goes into the fog, it's invisible. Like it's it's covered up completely. Cause I have dark vision. I don't know if that helps. Yeah, uh, it does not help in the well, specific I, scenario. I think we all have dark vision, yeah. so it does. Uh, okay. It's not dark. It's just covered. Yeah. Fuck you guys. I guess I'm not special. <laughs> You're special oh because God. you only move 25 feet instead of 30 like the rest of us. You little <laughs> short fuck. <laughs> yeah, he I'm also sorry. weighs 450 pounds. My whole uh, character is a disadvantage. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the only normal sized one here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's a gradient. Botox the biggest, uh, and then Leo's a little bit shorter, and then uh, fucking McGibbles is 
four foot five. I said we. I I think we agreed on. Yeah, something like that. Wait, how tall is Leo? Uh, how tall is Leo I'm like, actually? I'm 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 five five eleven, but I always say I'm six feet. No, <laughs> that means you're six feet on ten. You're just a scene kid, Kate. <laughs> oh my God. Leo's just a scene kid with magic. Yeah, one hundred percent. You're well if you're like nearly or six foot or you know nearly six foot. Botox got a half a foot of, up of you, yeah. so you're kind of tall actually. Holy shit! All right, I'm almost that height IRL. Oh, <laughs> can't relate. Ah! I'm six okay. foot even. So anyway. Not important. So, yes, uh, to reiterate um, what y'all just went through, uh, McGibbles wants Leo to punch the rune, uh, and both Botak and Leo notice that the glow gl gets a little a little bit brighter when the gloved hand gets closer to it. Visibility is about 15 feet away, but it's bright. Like, it's a bright fog, mm -hmm. you know? Um, I'm also going to allow you guys to notice that there's no bugs or birds or, like, anything. It's, like, Still, this forest is like still, with a lack of activity. A lack of activity. You know, it's uh, awfully quiet. I'm starting to notice. <laughs> I'm seeing any other. What? No. What'd you say, Kate? Kate said something earlier. Is Kate dead? <laughs> Kate. No, I'm back. Okay. <laughs> Hello. Okay. Yeah. Hello. Welcome back. Okay, so anyway, as both dog was saying, yes. I'm sorry, I had to clear my throat. No, you know it's uh, it's awfully quiet. Something's up with that glowing arm. I think we should find another room. Try touching it, if that does anything. Okay, I'll put my my hand still in the glove though on the on the rune. Okay. Yeah. Um, you touch the rune and it does again grow a little bit brighter. We're at like maybe um, like a, like an eight percent brightness of the rune. I, I know that that really doesn't mean anything, but it's it's bright enough to like all three of you see it get brighter when uh, um, uh, Leo actually touches it. But still, it's not like it's still dim, you know. Huh? That would go brighter than that. Not good. Hmm. Touch the other one. The other, the other rune. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'll go. So go I'll back go to the tree that's thing. behind you. Uh, you investigate yeah. the uh, the tree that is behind you where the other rune was. There is no rune on that tree. Oh no. Oh. So there's only one rune. Wait. That we can what see. if it's like a path? Like, like what? When you put the little string on the tree? Yeah. To that's what keep I'm your path? Yep. But we have to so find maybe we should world. find the next one. Yeah, okay. That's that's you're really quiet. Uh, yeah, we need to find the second, at least the second room. Okay. And see okay. if there's a pattern. Uh, uh, um, okay, so perception checks. How many of y'all want to make perception checks for runes? Oh, dog, will. I want to make one. All right, all three of y'all, roll for perception. Yeah. Can I, like, hold my hand out? <laughs> Uh, you know what? Actually, yeah. Hold your hand out, and I'll let you roll with uh, advantage. Oh, okay. I, I kind of, I find it quite funny that this most this time, the one with the highest okay. like bonus and perceptions gotten the lowest rolls for. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, Wait, is that oh, me? Mick Jibbles, yeah. you got you got a twelve in perception, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's a twelve. You, you have a plus four. The rest of us have plus three, and plus two. It's pretty <laughs> bad. I've had the shittiest rolls this whole time. So, uh, yeah. Um, all three of y'all, uh, uh, what is it? All three of y'all, uh, do notice that there are runes carved on other trees around y'all. Um, however, uh, Leo is holding his, uh, arm out and sort of, like, scanning the area. And, uh, what is it? Um, there's, like, you can notice at least four or five runes on trees around you and uh one of them uh does indeed start to glow a little bit faintly okay. all right uh, let's move uh, to that one all right all right it has to be a pattern it has to be right <laughs> such a bitch I swear. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, okay. Leo. i know there's something we're fucking missing i already know okay so well, Leo. Uh, 
Where's the way? All right, uh, Leo, make another perception check to see if you see a, a spot another uh, rune in the distance that's glowing. I'll let you do it with advantage, even. Okay. Oh, okay. Twice. Ooh, damn, nice. Matt, twenty. God damn. All right. I'm about to restart my fucking browser. How are you guys really <laughs> fucking roll, dude? <laughs> so you Fuck. hold your you hold your arm out, Leo, and you're scanning the environment, and you you're noticing more runes. You notice none that are glowing. Mm. And I will also say because you rolled a nat twenty, uh, you I will say that your character also looks back at the other tree that uh, where the uh, other rune is because the way that you guys walked, you sort of walked um, perpendicular to it, to where if you yeah. turned around, you could still see the glowing rune in it. Uh, that tree that you saw before is no longer there. Oh, hey guys, I think that tree just disappeared. What? That it's, it's not. It's not. Me. It's not that the tree disappeared. It's that a different tree is now in its place. Oh, sorry. Oh. I should clarify. Is this like a... Wait, so is, is it like a noticeable difference? Um, It's a slight difference. You you are able... I'm, I'm going to allow you all to notice that the branches are in different positions, and uh, there is no rune on that new tree that has appeared in its place. The fuck? What the fuck is going on? And uh, Leo, again, you have noticed no other glowing runes, but you are seeing runes, none that are glowing, and you are standing next to a tree that currently is glowing. But faintly, okay. but faintly. Yeah. And I st we still can't, like, recognize what these runes are. No, no. Okay. Um, huh. In Dwarvish, Odok oh, will I, look to this, uh, yeah. McDibbles. <laughs> In Dwarvish. Because <laughs> Botox knows Dwarvish. <laughs> or, is it just me, or does that tree seem different to you? McJibbles, uh, your, your response? What fuck you want me to do? <laughs> <laughs> it's a yes or no. Does no, I, 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 no, I know. Like, I, I, like like, like, I like to think that that's actually like, his response. It's just like... McJibbles' response. Uh -oh. yeah. Uh, yeah, let's 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 try it. Let's, uh... Try what? <laughs> I don't know. Like, I don't know magic stuff. <laughs> All right, I want to I want to try to, like translate the runes or something make a history check oh fuck oh no oh fuck not too bad all you can tell in uh in these runes you, you make an educated guess and say hmm these runes must uh, be linked with that forest deity that we're trying to kill that's all you can tell mm -hmm. Happy. There you go. <laughs> do, you, do you say this aloud? <laughs> like, do you convey the information to the rest of us, or do you just go happy? Hey man, it's just I don't know what the fuck this is. I've, I've seen it before somewhere. I don't know. <laughs> it's just that fucking god thing we fought is connected somehow. That's all I know. Which is pretty obvious, I think. I knew for a fact this would fucking stump y'all. I'm loving this. No, I, you suck uh, a bitch. <laughs> Puzzles for fucking three to four year olds. God yeah, damn. Right? right? I feel like I've conveyed enough information, but you, you have, know, you just I made a tree disappear. No, it changed. The trees were all the same, and we were lost, and now they're changing, guys. Okay. So you know what? Ruined... Actually, okay, wait, wait, wait. you know what? Make jibbles. Make another perception yeah. check. Perception. Perception. Excellent. Okay, so make jibbles. Right. You stop for a second and you think to yourself. Here's what you do. Um, you make a, uh, you, you look at a tree and you look away from it and you look back at it. The tree has changed. Like it is a different tree, different branches, different, um, like the way that everything is, uh, pointing changed. There's even a new rune in carved on the tree. It's not glowing, but there's a new rune in carved on that tree. And I want to reiterate all those, um, th that there are sparse amounts of, the uh, the orange yellowish fruit around, but yeah. Every time you look at a tree, look away, look back. It's a different tree. All right, I'm gonna eat some more fruit. All right, all right. What? Make a make a uh, make a survival check for that. The gibbles. Now is not the time to eat. 
I don't know, man. That fruit means something. Uh, you take a you take a big oh, honking taste. bite into that fruit, and it is a very nice, sweet taste with a slightly bitter aftertaste. Eat another fucking apple. Eat another one. All right, yeah. make another survival check. Fuck. Sorry, I just first that one. What Let's go. Fuck. fuck. Some jibbles. You pull off. You you angrily pull off another fruit. And you take a big honk and bite into it. And how do I describe this? You take a bite into it and you're angrily chomping at it. And uh, your vision just kind of goes spinning a little bit. You're not really hurting, but you're just kind of like woozy from eating that one. Just a little bit woozy. <laughs> the apple was fucking laced. <laughs> <laughs> fucking tripping balls now. <laughs> yeah. You okay there, Mc McDibbles? You 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 no. you you move around, and it feels like your skeleton is moving independent of your skin. Oh shit! It's like you move. It's like you move your body, but then your skeleton has to take a couple seconds to catch up to you. Oh. That's what it feels like. This is one of your shitty dreams. I know it. <laughs> no, this is the last time I got high. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's let's go to the tree with the current glowing rune. Whatever one's currently glowing. Okay, the one, the one, the one that's at. the one that uh, Leo is standing next to. Yes. Okay. All right. I'm gonna. Can I t touch it? Okay, I'm gonna touch it. The same thing happens. It glows a little bit brighter. Okay. Okay. Do we see a second one glowing nope. at right now? All right. You see more runes. None yeah, that are glowing. None are glowing. Yeah. Leo, at this moment, you feel a sort of heat coming from the inside of your enchanted arm. It's not burning. It's not painful. It's just your your uh, your enchanted arm just feels a little bit more. Uh, that's your left arm, am I correct? Right. Your right arm. Pardon me. Your right arm feels a little bit hotter than the rest of your body. Or it might be left. I don't know. Um. <laughs> Whichever arm is enchanted. <laughs> I yeah. I... Whichever arm is enchanted. My lefts and rights. All right. Well, we need to. Stick hey, hey, look, and use it as a McDevil's the one that's currently high right now, not you. you, you you're <laughs> supposed to know your left and right. McDevil's no, currently can't. Kate doesn't know her lefts and rights. <laughs> Leo's more competent than that, Kate. You need to do better for him. <laughs> okay, well, I'm looking... Oh, sorry. I'm looking at my little icon thing, and I think it's on my, his left hand, so I guess it's his left hand. Even sure. Though he said right his earlier. left arm feels a little bit warmer than the rest. Okay. Underneath the from underneath, it's like it's coming from underneath your glove. Okay, well, um, I don't like that, guys. My arm's warm. What kind of weird? <laughs> kind of weird. And I, I want to grab Leo's arm and just swing it around until a fucking rune glows. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, you know what? Yeah. Both of, both of y'all roll for uh, both of y'all make strength saving throws. I want to see who wins oh, in this yeah. situation. Oh, I think it's contested. Oh, it's and like, McJibbles, roll with disadvantage. <laughs> oh, fuck. Because you're, you're, high, cause, cause you're, high, you're high as fuck right now. That was my you best roll that. ever. Because you're high what as fuck right fuck? now. You say you, that he gets his first death party. <laughs> you fucking bitch. You fucking bitch. Roll again, what? McGibbles. Fucking, fucking nat 20. You All right. fucking nat 20. <laughs> fuck. All right. So... McGibbles, McGibbles, you got like a half a fruit in your hand, and you're kind of just like, F I'm gonna do it myself. And then you grab Leo's hand, uh, and uh, Leo sort of like flings you away. But uh, McGibbles, your grip is so strong that you actually pull the gl the entire arm length glove off of um, oh. Leo's enchanted arm. And I did in not that moment, that. in that moment, the rune glows brighter than it ever has. You guys realize you how I'm, I'm, I'm always saving the day? <laughs> Just saying. My dumbass shit always saves the day. It is Savant, anyway. Yeah. 
One hundred percent autism. An idiot servant. All right, Leo. What and the, what, what, would, what would you all like to do with this information? I'm just staring at the glowing rune uh, now. Can I, iron. <laughs> so, I am currently holding the glove. Yeah. In 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 your left hand, you're holding half of a fruit, and in your right hand, you are you are grasping at the at the loose glove that you just pulled off of um, Leo's right. enchanted hand. Or arm, so let's, excuse me. Let's um, let's put the glove without the arm on the rune. See what happens. Nothing happens. Fuck you. It wasn't the glove, dumbass. Then you fucking touch it. I thought it was the glove. <laughs> then why were you? Why were you wearing the fucking glove? What's the fucking glove for? I like imagine Big Joe you know saying this while he's like waving the glove around. So he's like, like waving, the, waving yeah. the glove around, just what? like, what, what the fuck you wearing this glove even for? The no. glove doesn't do shit. Can I toss the glove? Throw the fucking glove. No, no, don't toss you the glove. glove. Um, you know what? Both of y'all roll for decks. Make deck saving throws. I want to see who wins. Cause uh, Leo, you are like McJibbles. You're uh, you're motioning to throw the glove away, but Leo, you're trying to like run in and try to catch it. So I want you. Oh, I want. I want both of y'all to roll decks. McJibbles, roll with disadvantage because you're high as fuck. Oh fuck. All right. <laughs> oh, dude. Fuck. It doesn't matter anymore. Leo, you're able to grab the glove out of you 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 lunge forward at McJibbles and you grab the glove out of his hand. And uh in doing so, you go a little bit forward because you kind of stumble a little bit on the on the loose uh turf <laughs> underneath your feet, and yeah. uh you pay attention. The glove's still off, you're just kind of holding it. Uh you're not wearing it. And uh <laughs> you look up and you see a rune glow on a tree in front of you in the distance. About 10 feet in front of you. You're welcome, Leo. That was literally thanks to me. I Fucking guess, awesome. I guess I'll keep holding, I'll, I'll keep I'll keep the glove off, I guess. Yeah, I wasn't really gonna throw it. I just wanted to, you know, move on with, you know? That's, <laughs> that's long sure. You're an idiot savant. Oh, yes. Isn't he still high? <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's pretty high. <laughs> Hey, anybody oh, want a fucking apple, bro? Anybody want a fucking apple? These fucking apples are saving the day. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. I think I'll pass. If I had none of that fruit and vegetable shit, you guys keep feeding me. <laughs> yeah, because you're a half orc. You want there's, meat. There's, there's yeah. no animals in this forest. <laughs> I know. He's All driving right. Bodoc crazy. You want some rabbit tacos? I got rabbit tacos. Fuck yeah. I guess I'm gonna walk towards the glowing rune. The, the sure, but before we do that, Botak, do you yeah. do you want to McGib first off, McGibbles? Do you want to give Botak the rabbit tacos? Yeah, that dude needs some meat. All right. So, Botak, you want to eat the you want to eat the rabbit tacos? Sure, I'll, I'll do it while following them. All right. <laughs> they they are nice. They are good tacos. A little bit oh, a little yeah. bit light on the flavor because they're so lean. You know, rabbit is a is a notoriously lean meat. But uh, there's enough spice on on the meat that um, it's able to produce its own flavor without needing so much fat. Still meat. Yep. That's all Botox cares about. It's very nice. It's, it is it is a fulfilling uh, meal in this fucking hellscape you find yourself in. <laughs> no goddamn animals. How the how is the orc supposed to eat in this environment? Okay, so um, Leo, are you walking toward the tree with with or without your party? Are you motioning for your party to come with you? I, I feel like imagine Botox following while in like mid eating apple, just walking. Okay, while okay, okay, okay. Then all all three of y'all are walking and talking and going toward yeah. the tree. Um, the the rune on on this tree, it's a. They're all different runes. I should clarify. Each yeah. glowing rune you found is different from the last in different in subtly different ways. Um. Then the closer, Leo, you get to the tree, it glows brighter and brighter and brighter. About, well, let's say uh, beforehand, the very dim light brightness was about 8%. Now we're going to say it is about 40% uh, brightness. Okay. And you're, I wanna, you're, you're standing like right in front of the tree, but you're not like touching it at all. Can, can I touch it? Touch the rune? Yeah. Okay. With my hand. You touch the rune with which hand? The, the, what, the, 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 the messed up one the magic one gotcha yeah. you touch the insides of the rune with the magic hand full 100 percent brightness of the rune glows in your face and you oh. uh 
you, uh, your attention is brought behind you as you can very clearly see a path of glowing runes that are glowing bright, so bright the light pierces through the fog, and, uh, you do find yourself, uh, a path through the enchanted forest. Knew it. And so let's say you, uh, as you're walking down the path for the enchanted trees with all the runes, you come across the foot of of a little creek or a, like a stream it's it's not deep but it's wide you know uh and you and you the water is flowing the the runes pull you further and further down the creek Wee. and hmm? what are you doing mcgibbles no keep going okay uh you okay. go you follow the stream further and further down till eventually you do break free of the tree line and you find yourself in a large open area with a, uh, a large lake in front of you. And in the center of said lake is a blue, a large blue floating crystal right in the middle of the water. It's hovering just above the water and it is very large. And it seems like there's a lot of magic pouring off of it. Uh, all right, we got to smash the bright thing. as well, but I think that's the crystal we're supposed to destroy. Pretty sure. You All sure? right, give me a moment. Botok will approach a little bit closer. Yeah, just to the oh, water's uh, edge. I also, sorry, I do want to, sorry to interrupt. I do want to clarify. You've been walking for a little bit. Uh, uh, McGibbles, your high is wearing off. Botok will like the lead. Should short, I grab but... another apple? Do you want to? Nah, that's probably a bad idea. Okay. Uh, let's, let's find a rock. I need a rock. Uh, McGibbles, roll for perception. Botok is currently leaning towards the water like edge. Yeah. Okay. Uh McGibbles. Um sorry to interrupt. I just want to finish this up real quick. McGibbles, uh you find a large stone that is big enough to fit within your tiny uh, dwarf grasp as a full like handful of a rock. And you have 1d4 of damage with it. And bludgeoning right. damage specifically. Nah, we need to we need to smash that fucking crystal, and uh, I have the best tool for that. Gotcha. And uh, 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 Botak, what are what are you doing again? I, I'm leaning towards the water edge, uh, or kneeling, I guess. Not not like one, one knee, you know. So you're inspecting now. the water. Yeah, uh, I'm taking a hand, and I'm just gonna scoop some water in it. Okay. Uh, make a perception check then. Okay. Perfect. Ooh. So. Um, you go in and you, you sort of like get on your knees right at the, at the, at the base of the lake and you dunk your hand in first off the lake isn't very deep and you can, you can tell like going all the way to uh, where the crystal is in the center. It's st like, you can tell that the deepest part of the lake is only like maybe two feet, you know, not mm. very deep at all. Mm. all right. Ooh, pardon me. Um, and you dunk your hand into the water and you pull some out and you hold it in your, uh, in the uh, in the palm of your hand like you cut both of your hands together and you scoop some out and uh, the water is in fact glowing with a baby blue almost purplish uh, sparkle of energy sort of like magic -y. Um the water has no negative or positive effect on you uh, when you touch it it's just kind of sparkling it's magic water mm -hmm. well, oh go with. and um, you also notice a faint glimmer underneath the water not dissolving my skin or anything. I think that's um, a good idea, buddy. It's magic water. It has to be good. I'm going to I drink thought it. you hated magic. <laughs> Make a medicine I mean... check. Oh boy. All right. So you cut both of your hands together. You pull a little bit of the sparkling water out. You drink it, and you know what Aurora Borealis looks like. <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck yeah you start seeing um, that on the surface of the water <laughs> everything in the forest gets you high dude. yeah Whoa. I, I want to clarify there's Jeez. no effects other than your change in vision you don't feel different you just see that aurora borealis waves come oh. off like come from the crystal and wave out along the surface of the water and it stops when the water uh when the water's edge starts I don't want to love you guys, but the water's on fire. Both of you guys notice nothing. <laughs> um, um, Nick Gibbles, I think I think Botak is high. <laughs> I found a cool rock. <laughs> it's 
nice. Everybody was like, look at it. So, uh, I, I think we, I think we had the certified uh, as someone it, we know very well would put it, Tard Wrangler on the group. Uh, yeah. I mean, you gotta oh. smash the crystal with something. McGibbles, <laughs> McGibbles, your high is coming down enough to where you notice that there is a little, a smaller blue crystal poking out of the big rock you just picked up. So uh, now you get one d four damage plus one because you have another crystal to smack with. Because your high is coming down, so you're noticing a little bit more about your environment. You're able to process more of what's going so, on. So I have a rock. Yeah. And a crystal, or I just no. You have a rock, and there's like a crystal embedded in the rock. Oh, okay. Like a small one, like about the size of a quarter. Ooh. I want to throw my rock at the crystal. We're not dead yet, so I think the water's sort of safe to drink. Except now I'm seeing shit, so that's All probably right. not a good sign. All right, McGibbles, you want to throw the rock? I mean, we're supposed to smash these crystals, right? Let's go. Okay. Uh. uh... Yeah, you smash the crystal. So, uh, make a strength check. No, make an athletics check. Pardon me. Specifically athletics. Well, I still have some sort of semblance of uh, coherence. God, I have the shittiest rolls, dude. So. Fuck. Um, you take the rock in your hand. You, you toss it up a little bit and you catch it. And you're like, all right, I'm, we're supposed to smash that crystal. So let's just fucking... And you yeet that fucking rock all the way into the center of the lake. It's not very far. The lake itself is only about, uh, let me do a little bit quick measurement. It's only about, 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 about 40 feet into the lake. So it's, it's a distance, but it's not like unreasonably big, you know? Um, so uh, you are able, you? you do throw the rock and it does hit the crystal. And there is a, you hear like this resonance. Like, you know when you hit a tuning fork and there, like that one note just sort of oh. echoes? And that sort of happens. It makes like a thung noise. And uh, you see, uh, all three of you see a little bit of a ripple form from the crystal and wave out into where the, uh, to the edge of the water and stop. Just a single one. Just a single wave. Does, does anything happen with the Aurora Borealis? Um, it glows. You know, Okay, so you're, you see it being like a, like a baby blue, almost purplish, like a gradient, like baby blue at the top, purplish on the bottom. Um... And uh, the the entirety of the Borealis goes purple. Mm. The baby blue part kind of vanishes. Right. And on that We're note, on that note, I want to call a commercial break real quick because I'm fucking thirsty and my throat hurts. Got it. <laughs> okay. I'm going. I'm gonna go take like a ten, like a like a little bit of a ten minute break. I'm gonna go fill up some water, uh, re refresh my throat, and then we will uh, conclude this episode after we are done. All right, all right. All right, BRB. All right, we have uh, we have resumed recording. Okay, okay. so uh, welcome back from the break. Uh, what has happened? Uh, what what has happened? So um, Botak is currently seeing a, pur a solid purple aurora borealis come away from the crystal. Uh, McJibbles threw a rock at it. It hit the crystal. Loud gonging sound came from it. A single wave rippled out from the from the center of the crystal out into the edges of the lake. Um. Yes, 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 yes. So, at uh, at that moment, there is. Uh, you guys notice that there's like these little red wispies that are inside the crystal in that picture there. Yes. Suddenly. Those red wisps grow larger and larger and larger. Uh, and from behind the crystal, as if from nowhere, uh, these uh, two creatures emerge from behind it. Ah, and these two creatures can only be described as a skull with wings on it, enshrouded by a ball of fire. Oh no, it has low polygons. Shit. Yeah, it also has low polygons. <laughs> oh, fucking wings, bro. Anyway, they're Not about. Love polygon beams. Send us back to the fucking GameCube era. No. No. Anyway, so they're about that big. They're the the fire itself spans about ten feet in height, uh, and the skulls themselves, you know, are pretty large in and of themselves. They're about the size of McJibbles. The just the skulls, and the uh, the the ball of fire around it is uh, quite large and extending quite far out of it. And uh, they fly out from behind the crystal, and they kind of go in. They kind of go in between the crystal and you guys. Roll for initiative. 
Is it just me or is the water more on fire now? Oop. It's okay, oh. Leo has a fire potion or whatever. <laughs> Roll for initiative, everybody. Oh, initiative. Get that turn order open. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. So, McGibbles, you rolled... Okay, so, McGibbles rolled an 8, and Leo rolled a 19. Okay, so. Uh, add turn. Add turn. McGibbles, you rolled an 8. There we go. You rolled a 19. Uh, and now, I'm going to roll for those two bubbles. We're going to roll two of these. Uh, two and a 14. Awesome. Okay, so. Add turn. Add turn. So this goes here. That is a 14. Uh, what did you roll, Leo? You rolled a 19. McGibbles, you rolled an 8. And that guy rolled a 2. Okay. Oh, wait. Oh, rolled a 2. There we go. Alrighty. So, here we go. Leo. Yes. What would you like to do? Your glove. Uh, I should clarify. Um, your glove is off, and it is in yep. your. It is in your opposite hand. Mm-hmm. All right. Gosh, that means I'm not putting my knife on. Uh. <laughs> oh. Shit. Um. Oh, let me double check something real quick. Um. Okay. Sorry, let me just... Uh, no, uh, continue thinking about your move. I just need to open something. Yeah, on I'm, I'm thinking. Don't worry. I'm okay. thinking. Just uh, see how far away everybody is. Okay. Who who buzzed me? Leo, your thoughts on your yes. action? Um, I'm gonna use the I'm gonna I'm gonna use my free action to yell at Mick Gibbles. Uh huh. Um, Fuck. I'm gonna tell him, you know. Fuck this and fuck you, McGibbles. And then I'm gonna use Eldritch Blast on one of the uh, skulls. All right, we're finally doing magic. Let's go. Okay. So, uh, fuck you, fuck McGibbles, fuck all this. And you're gonna use yeah. Eldritch Blast. Roll yeah. to see if it hits. Ooh. Ooh. So. So, uh, Leo, you're, you're feeling scared and frustrated and your, your, your mind is sort of racing like, ah, oh, shit. Oh no, there's two of them. Ah, oh, fuck. And you, dart, your eyes dart over to Mick Gibbles and you focus on him and you say, fuck you, Mick Gibbles, you piece of shit. Fuck all this. And you raise your hand out and you, you, uh, you, uh, what, what, how do I say this? You, um. Smash it forward. I don't know. You just throw your hand forward with your palm extended, and you el and you cast Eldritch Blast, and you just release this grand purple and, and baby blue crackling bit of, of lightning and energy. It flies directly past the bubble and hits the water. But, McGibbles, in that moment, you notice there are a cacophony of weapons underneath the water beneath the crystal. Swords, warhammers, maces, uh, daggers, all kinds, directly under the surface of the water. Because when the Eldritch Blast lands, it splashes the water away, and McGibbles, with his high perception, is able to notice that, yes, there are indeed a large quantity of weapons under just underneath the surface of the water, which happens to be behind the two fire bubbles. So, uh, yeah, unfortunately, the Eldritch Blast does not hit. Leo, would you like to do anything else before the end of your turn? Throw the glove on the ground. Okay. Okay, you are no longer holding the glove. Okay. Very angrily. Okay. So, it is now the first bubble's turn, which uh, 
is, uh, which bubble is it actually? Fuck it, this is the first bubble. I'm just gonna label him one. Uh, if you hover over the thing, you see which one. Uh, the okay. initiative or turn order. Oh, okay, 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 so this one's one, sorry. So this one's one, and uh, this one is two. Can I like change? Ah, eh, whatever, it's fine. Uh, you can do something with it, like to, you know, for yourself, you can give them like a little, you know, like, uh, like uh, I'm doing a we'll bow talk right now. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, 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 it's fine, it's fine. It's fine. I, I'll be able to. I'll be able to recognize each of them. It's fine. So yes, right. the first bubble. The first bubble. Uh, it flies directly towards uh, Botak, oh, and shit. it attempts to sort of just ram its flames into Botak. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to. Let me just check real quick. Um. Okay. Cool. Uh, let me just roll right here. Ooh. Ooh. What's your what's your AC again, Botak? Uh she meets she beats. If that's a twelve. <laughs> Unless it has the minus. <laughs> that is. I don't no pluses matter here. That's a that, That's a well, hit. It's, it's a twelve. It's a twelve. Okay. Right. Okay. So yes, Botak, the bubble is able to fly it right in front of you and sort of just like be within your vicinity and sort of like like lunge its flames directly into you. And uh, that does, so that does hit. So it does 1d4 plus three. Ooh, so you take seven damage. Not only that, ah! not only that. You also take 2d6 of fire damage. Oh, so death then. Yeah, I'm out. You're you're gone. That's it. Uh, I, I I'm knocked out. All right. So, uh, <laughs> you're just kind of in the water again. <laughs> <laughs> Never get that feeling of deja vu. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh boy. Oh boy. Okay then. Anyway, it's not immediately kill, but you know I'm making death saves again. You're making you're making death saves now, so uh, make a make a death saving throw. Oh uh, yeah, it's my turn now. Yeah, it is your turn, indeed. Two. Ouch. Death saves. Failed. That is a that, or... net one. Yep. Ouch. All right, McGibbles, you, you just saw Botak get absolutely fucked. By the way. Um, Botek, you fell into the water, so you would have been on fire at this moment, but you are not because you fell into the water. <laughs> oh, oh, good. <laughs> Glad to know. And now I'm drowning again. <laughs> again, yep. Yep, you're still drowning. So, McGibbles, <laughs> what do you want to do? Well, well, I still have, uh, you know, Even though health. that fight wasn't canon at all. <laughs> no. I would like to, uh, I would like to jump in the water before I get burned. Mm -hmm. And uh, while I'm in there, let's search for some goddamn weapons, if possible. So uh, I should I should uh, specify that the weapons only go out about this far. You have to be like at the crystal to get to the weapons. So okay. you're only I'll able to go up. about that far. I'll take it. All right, all right. So you're able to run that far, and you're in your. So the water is uh, deep. If, for you, it's about. A little bit above your ankles. Okay. So it's it's still shallow, but there's enough to where if you were to take a sizable hit, you know, some bad stuff would happen. So yeah, uh, you're there. So uh, wait, 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 wait. So that was a move, right? That was your movement. Okay, free action. I want to go drop to the floor, go prone. Just go under the water. Yep. <sighs> All right. Uh, make a stealth check. Fuck me in the ass. Swear to God. Splish, splash. The, uh, so, uh, the bubbles don't notice you going underwater, but in this moment, when you go prone, you are, uh, you look under the water and you're looking around and you do see, and you see the sparkles of, of whatever water you find. Uh, 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 you see the sparkles of the water that uh, Botak also saw when he, sco when he scooped it into his hands. Um... And uh, you do see 
a, uh, a miniature flail. Miniature. So it's about, uh, you hold it, and the ball itself is about the size of, uh, how big is a wiffle ball? It's that's bigger pretty, than a baseball. That's, yeah, that's pretty big, actually. Uh, say ten, soft. Ten, soft a tennis ball. ball. Tennis balls are small. Okay. Yeah, so uh, it's about a one-handed mace. The handle is, uh, is only meant for to be held with one hand, and the uh, actual um, spiked part itself is about the size of a, uh, of a tennis ball. But so, it's still a fucking mace. But it's still a fucking mace. So you do get a weapon in this situation. I'm going to throw okay. you a bone here, buddy. All right, fuck it. I'll take it. So you do have a... Oh, and uh, let's say you get a D6 for damage with that. All right. All right. So that... I, I think that's all those, I'm yeah. going to tell you right now, your breath is not going to last long enough for you to stay in that water for long. Actually, given... <laughs> there, there's rules about drowning. <laughs> Ah, oh, whatever. Uh, anyway. Because he has a plus three in con. Uh, every, every character can I, I hold their... I have four health, I assume. I'm not just going to drown. You're myself. not going to drown. No, 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 no. But you can't hold your breath forever. Yeah. Uh, at least if you want to go off. The, the, the rules for uh, uh, being underwater is that he can hold his breath for up to, like, four minutes because he has a plus three to con. It's a mm -hmm. one minute plus, you know, uh, your con modifier as additional minute. All right, uh, then. That's I a lot of turns. Yeah. But, uh... <laughs> But after oh, no, that, I'm, then I'm you start doing on, death saves, I'm no matter what your health up, is. Like every turn, you, I'm good. I'm not gonna gotcha. what, what, Once that minute runs out, you're, it's death saves from there. Oh yeah, gotcha. no, we're not. We're not even going there. Yeah. All start. right. So uh, the second. I to the crystal. It's now the second bubbles turn. And uh, let me just actually do a little bit of a measurement here. How far yeah. is that? Oh, uh, okay. Okay. So the flame bubble that, that can move that far. Leo, why'd oh, you throw your works. glove? Oh, McJib will say that again? Why'd you throw the glove? Oh, Leo took the glove off. Uh, Leo? Like the glove was gonna do anything yeah, Leo that. took the glove off. Like, what's yeah. up with that? Because fuck you, that's why. <laughs> all right. I saying, like, I just tried to throw the glove and you got all mad or me for trying to get rid of it. So, Leo. Yeah? The second bubble is, try is flying towards you. Yeah. And then uh, let's see if uh, if he hits. What's your uh, what's your armor class? Thirteen. Thirteen. Okay. All right. So the bubble flies towards you, and uh, you in in your like heightened like in your heightened adrenaline, you're able to notice the uh, the bubble coming, and uh, it's trying to uh, lunge at you, but you are able to dodge out of the way. Now my question to you is. Which direction do you want to dodge? To your left or to your right? Um, I'm going to say towards Bo Botak, whichever direction that is. All right. So you're going to dodge a little bit this way, and the bubble just sort of like lunges into you, but misses, yeah. and you're able to dodge out of the way. So it doesn't hit, yeah. and you are able to just get out of the way of its okay. uh, of its flaming uh, aura, so you do not catch on fire. But the okay. uh, the the... Some bits of your cape and some bits of your sleeve are a bit uh, charred after this. Close call. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And with that, Leo, it is your turn. Okay. Am I am, am I in like in then in melee range of him? And if I dis if I if I leave, he has an opportunity attack. I'm assuming. Yes. Oh, well, let's say he's still recoiling from like okay. trying to ram itself into you. So it's like kind of like stammering a bit, you know. Okay. So if you were to um, disengage, it would not have an opportunity attack, but mm -hmm. you are leaving, you are uh, turning your back toward the enemy. Just keeping that in mind. Yeah. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to go to Botox then, and I'm going to try to shove my healing potion in his mouth. All right, then. All right, then. So you're going to run over to Botox. You're going to pull out your one red potion. Yes. And then uh, let me double check my notes here. All right. Uh, how do you want to do this? How do you want? How do you want to administer the potion to him? Um, just like pull his like, just pull his head like out of out of the water and like try to tilt it up as best I can, and then just pour it into his mouth and then like. Okay. Okay. Try to like. So let's go ahead and his throat. let's go ahead and roll right here. So that is seven. All right. So uh, Botak, you heal nine points of health. Woo! Some of your, your you uh, Botak wakes up, 
His burn marks sort of recede back into his body, but not all the way. There's still a little bit of burns on uh, him. I, I'm missing just one hit point at this point. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not a not a lot, but I mean, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Still, it still... really build, build me up back to full health. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, so, uh, Botak, you are back on board, back on the team. Oh! <laughs> yeah. I'm yeah. drowning so goddamn much. Quit drowning. Uh, but unfortunately... Oh. <laughs> So, uh, 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 Leo, would you like to do yep. anything else during this turn? Um, I would like to turn around because I'm kind of facing the, the guys. Okay, so you're, so you're facing towards both of the bubbles. So you're, so you're, yes. they're both, they're in your line of sight. Yes. Okay, perfect. Works for me. All right, next, it is, uh, this bubble's turn. And seeing what you just did, the bubble's trying to make a beeline for you. So it tries to bash you. All right. Uh, let us roll to see if he hits. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. So, uh, Bash does that much damage. So it does hit. So, it flies directly into you, and it does mm -hmm. manage to uh, sort of uh, bash its skull body into you. And that does... Uh, three damage on its own, but okay. you also take damage because of the fire cloak. Yes. So you take 2d6 of damage from the fire. Okay. So you take a total of 10 points of damage. Okay, well, I'm unconscious then. No! <laughs> uh, I have 10 hit Yeah, same here. Yep. Oh, night, night. All right. All right, oh. so at least I'm not drowning. You guys are down, or uh, Leo, you're down now, and uh, now the bubble is sort of right by Botak, not close enough to activate Fire Cloak. All right, next, Botak, what are you gonna do? Um, you just well, woke okay, up. First, um, I don't know how you, um, uh, when I'm. Well, return back. Do uh, death saves clear? Uh, the failures? yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's say all that okay. resets. Okay, got it. So I'm not dead yet. <laughs> no, <laughs> or, or no. your your death um, save your death save doesn't count anymore. I mean, I'm not really like moving. I'm just trying to put myself in like in a token like spot. Uh, sure. This is fine. Okay. Yeah. Uh, right. I'm gonna return the favor. Uh, <laughs> You're gonna pour the other healing potion down Leo's throat. I'm gonna throat? pour my healing potion like, oh shit! If I, if I went down that easily, I need you at least. You guys have been wasting all these potions. Jesus. Uh, is that an action or a bonus action? How do you? Pull uh, I'm gonna. I'll count it as a bonus action. All right. All right. All right. Pour a healing potion down uh, Leo's okay. throat. Okay. Let's see how much it heals. <laughs> seven <laughs> no, no, easily. Seven points of health. Oh, is Kate is Kate still here? Yep. Oh, Kate's gone. There you go. Well, Kate, no, you're back to life. You're back to life. Right. Yeah. You got seven points. As you just saved my life, so I have to immediately think. Oh, return the paper, and because right. I have an action, I guess. Uh, and so one of the punch daggers, and I'm just gonna try punching the the thing that just mm. attacked Leo. Roll to see if you hit. Sixteen. Okay. Okay. Uh. Okay. So. How do I say this? Botak. Mm -hmm. You're trying. What do you? What do you? How are you? How are you going to attack this bubble? I'm just swinging, just like wildly, just like. You're just going to swing at it. Yeah, just like I'm. I'm I immediately pour like left hand, you know, pouring potion bottle into Leo's throw, and then I'm, you know, trying to like, like trying to swipe out like a fly, you know, with okay. the dagger. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, okay. Here, here's what here's what goes down. You're mm -hmm. on. You you get down on your knees and you shove your potion into Leo's mouth. Not in innuendo aside. You manage to revive Leo, and you turn around and take a wild, almost blind swing at the bubble. Um, now, you don't directly hit it, but 
uh, the the sheer force of your punch and the the anger and fear in in your uh. swing, in your half orc body is strong enough to full orc. Pu- oh, full orcs! Pardon me. In yeah, your full yeah. orc body, even better. The the force of the wind that you produce with your swing is enough to push the bubble back. You don't hit it, but you push it back, and it lands in the water, dousing its flames. Woo! So it is currently in the water, not on fire anymore, still very much alive, but it's not on fire anymore, and it's not flying. It's kind of flailing in the water a little bit. All right. Noted. Noted. Anything else you wish to do? Uh, I mean, that's my action. That's my bonus action. Um, it's now away from me. Uh, yeah, no, that, that's right. it. McJibbles! I'm, I'm not going to go from here. What, wow. How's it going under the water, McJibbles? Wait, okay. actually, no, actually, hold on. I would actually like to move. No, the water is probably safety. Oh, you want to move into the water? Would it count as difficult terrain, or... Uh... uh let's turn? say the water's shallow enough that no. Alright. I'm moving farther into the deep. <laughs> Alright, sure. <laughs> You're just abandoning Leo like that. Listen, I saved Leo the best I can. At this, like... If either of us take a hit, we're going down, so it doesn't matter. Alright, alright, alright. Alright, McJibbles. How's it hanging under the water, my friend? Got some ideas. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, that skull no longer on fire. Yes, and it's just like chilling in the water or above it's, the water. It's like it's... flailing halfway in the water. Like it's like it's trying to regain its composure. Oh fuck! I'm so torn right now. Uh, uh if I were to move. Okay, I know I could reach the uh the fucking the skull. Could mm. I reach the crystal from where I am? Let's see. Your movement speed is 25, right? Yes. Yes, you could. Oh, fuck. Do I, do I go for the skull or do I go for the crystal? That's up to mm. you. Fuck. Abandon the teammates for the mission or save your teammates? Go for the fucking mission. I'm mission first, okay? Mission first. <laughs> All right. I like it. I like it. All, All right. right. I want to go. I want to stand up. And uh, I want I want to go towards the, towards the crystal. All right. Close back into it. All right. So you're closing in on the crystal. Yes. And uh, you want to smack it? I got the. I still got my helmet on. I got the mace in my hand. Go ahead. Let's let, let's take a swing at that bitch. Uh, roll uh, roll to you, see if you hit. Yeah. Right, uh, as you go for the crystal, crystal, I can imagine. Or, uh, D20. Uh, yeah, as roll you go a for D20. Yeah. Yep. As you go for the crystal, I can just imagine like the top left side of your corner is like a telltale thing. Botox will remember this. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty. So, Bot- uh, not Botak, uh, McGibbles. McGibbles. You, uh, you, you, you pause and you think to yourself, this is a perfect opening for this skull, but fuck this, I need to, I need to complete the mission. This is, this is for, uh, this is for Bobber, for the guild! And you run and you scream with your mace flying above your head, and you- l- forever. You slam the mace right into the crystal. Visible cracks appear in the crystal. Roll the take it. Roll a d6 to see how much damage you do. I'll take it. Ooh. So, Jamian. Okay. So, Jamian, or McGibbles, in this moment, you never noticed the mace is actually enchanted. Hmm. So, against this crystal, I'm going to allow you I'm going to allow you to have a uh, d6 plus 4 in magic damage. Well, what I mean by that is you have plus four magic damage. So you roll your d6, then you get plus four magic damage. So you, in total, dealt nine damage to the crystal. So let me just go ahead and... uh, I I like that. How... uh, Let me just double check my notes here. Okay, so nine damage to it. So that would be... Bam. Uh, Yeah, there we go. Perfect. Just had had to do basic math again. Anyway... So yes, visible cracks are appearing in the crystal, and when you smack it, another one of those large gonging noises uh, uh, go pulse through the water, and um, and uh, the waves go through the water, and everything ripples. And uh, when you smack the crystal, both bubbles stop, 
and the one that's flailing in the water is able to reorient itself. It's not flying yet, but it's face up, and they're both looking right at you. Do I still have a free action? Uh, you ha you did your movement, you did your action to attack it. Uh, you can do a bonus action, so you can do uh, minor stuff. I'm okay, not gonna, go uh, you can't attack another time. Okay, go prone again. Under the water? Yep. All right, all right. Uh, roll for perception. No sharks in the water. <laughs> Seven. Don't fucking say that. No, no, it's not deep enough for sharks. Fuck you. So you go underneath the water. You go underneath the water, and the first weapon that catches your eye. Because remember, there's a cacophony of weapons down there. Ah, oh, yeah. The first weapon that catches your eye is a uh, is a long, enchanted warhammer. Yep. Let's switch. You get a D12 in damage for that. Plus four because it's enchanted. I assume I have to drop the mace, right? Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because it is play. a two-handed weapon, so you're not going to be able to carry both. Yep. All right. So now you get a D12 plus four for magic. But they're, bo they're both looking in your direction. They both saw you. Okay, go prone. Fuck it. I don't care. All righty. All you right. can attack if you can't burn me. I'm out of water. I'll take it. All right. Next turn is the bubble that just attacked Leo. And, uh, Jamian, it noticed you. It certainly noticed you. Uh, how far does it... How far can it go again? It can go 35... Uh, yeah, it can't reach me. Oh, just barely, just ah. barely. So it sort of it sort of flies over to just about where you are, but because you're under the water, it can't go in the water, or else its flames would go out. So it's yeah. just kind of hovering around the vague area where you are. I'm learning free action, boys. <laughs> Hell yeah! All right, and because it can't attack, we're gonna move on. Leo, it is your turn. Fuck him up, Leo. <laughs> I want to clarify okay. also the, the second skull that landed in the water Is still not flying It's just sort of sitting in the water okay. Trying to flap its little wings On on the sides of its head to fly away But it kind of can't because its wings are too wet Okay uh, I am going to uh, Come on Leo I'm, I'm going to Eldrick, Eldrick Blast the, the flailing one Okay sure uh, Go ahead and roll and see if it hits Get the helpless one. Come roll. on, hell yeah, take him out. Ooh, that nice. is a that is a clean hit. All righty, roll for damage. I want to I want to see how bad this is. Did I do it right? Yeah, there we go. All right, uh, and then the flame bubble has to make a spell save DC. So that it does, no, it doesn't. It's uh, oh, no, no, it, it, it's that, attack it's bell, not a... yeah. Oh, no, yeah. okay. Pardon me. I got confused that, for a that, second. That automatically comes in. I hit the wrong button. Yeah. Pardon me. So, yes. You do hit. And uh, you deal eight whole damage to it. So, here's what happens. Uh, you notice that the skull is facing away from you. So you'd think this is the perfect opportunity to try to get a fucking blast in on it. So you lunge your hand forward, palm outward. Uh, 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 a large bolt of uh, baby blue purple lightning flows out of your hand. Just bam! Eldritch Blast! And it lands right on uh, one of the wings of the skull. Uh, its right wing. So, yeah. It lands right on its right wing. Pops it clean off. It can't fly anymore. So... Bitch. Yeah, you deal uh, eight damage to it, so that is down to, excuse me, nope, oh, shit, I just reloaded the page. <laughs> so that was, uh, you dealt eight damage, so now it's that much health, and then the other one is still at max HP. Okay, so yes, good job, Leo, you landed a solid hit. All right, uh, anything else you wish to do? Okay. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna drink my uh, my fire resistance potion. All right. That might be fire resistance. Uh, roll the medicine check. Fuck. I hope it is. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, you feel much stronger, and your whole body feels like a a a warmth flow across it like you can you can feel the potion go down your throat and through your esophagus and down into your stomach and as it flows down your body you feel that warmth spread out from your core all the way to your extremities and uh 
you're feeling it. Okay. I'm the, the, it. the 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 proper effect now is you take half you take half fire damage. Yes. <laughs> but I'm feeling it. Okay. For how long though? <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> no, no. We'll cross that bridge when we get to it. <laughs> All right, uh, give me one second, sorry. Yeah. No, no, yeah. Just writing down a couple of notes here. Okay, um, yes, so this bubble is now down, is down a wing, so it can't even fly anymore, and it's in the water, so it can't uh, get its flames going. The other one, is, though, is still trying to find uh, where McGibbles is. So, speaking hell? of, speaking of the bubble that's kind of flailing around, uh, what it's going to do is you can see it sort of stop, like, it reels from the attack that it just took, and it stops, and you can see it try to, um, the, the, the wing itself flies off of its body and lands near where Botok is, coincidentally, <laughs> and, uh, 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 the wing is slowly sliding back toward the bubble, like it's trying to rebuild itself, and I'm going to, uh, roll here to see if it succeeds. Hmm, okay. So, it drags it closer, and the wing does make it to the body, but it's not fully attached yet. So, it, it's trying its hardest, but it couldn't quite reattach its wing in one in one go. And uh, that's the only action it could take in that situation. So, Botak, your go. Well, this thing seems useless in the water, as far as voting. This thing's still yeah. flaming and uh, yeah, going against yeah. an ally. Yeah. Um, just gonna, well, keep a little bit of a distance away from it. Sure. Get over here. That's going to be the moment, really. But, um. Gimmo, what the fuck are you doing? Hey, get get down from there. No, you're not allowed. Nah. God damn it. Um, Magna Carp uses splash. <laughs> you're gonna try yeah. to you're gonna try to splash water yeah. on it. Yeah, oh, well, fucking genius. Why did I think of that? That's a good that's a good idea. All right, yeah. Uh, roll just some water and just roll with an athletics uh, modifier. Athletics? Yeah, just because you're because you're you're trying to like push your arm. Are you trying to kick it? Or are you trying to like how, how are you how are you gonna splash it? Again, again the water's two feet, so I'm just like bending over. You know, two hands scoop like I mean. One okay. has, like, dagger in hand. Actually, I'm just going to drop the dagger. Fuck it, too. All right, sure. Uh, in, in, in the water as soon as I get approached, just so I know where it's there. And then just scoop up water and just go... <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm going to say do an athletics check with that. Because you have to bend down and, like, move your body to do it. Fuck it. Why not? Athletics, huh? Yeah, let you throw a modifier on it. Why not? Oh, you picked poorly. No, no, I didn't. I have expert fucking T's. Okay, that, that was the 10, but 19. Oh, fuck yeah. I have a plus 9 in that. All right, all right, all right. So, I, I... <laughs> Botac, mm -hmm. in that moment, hold on, let me just let me just uh, do a little bit here. Um, hold on, I just realized I got my math wrong. Sorry. I put my rogue, one of my rogues expertise in athletics, so. All I'm right then, well, good for you. <laughs> so, uh, yes, you splash water on <laughs> the, uh, on the uh, bubble. However, the bubble recoils and the bubble, the bubble's flames shrink but it doesn't fully go out yet. So, um, and it, uh, it recoils the, the flame shrink. It's still flying and, uh, it's flames grow back about half is what they used to be. And now it's looking right at you. Is there anything else you wish to do before your turn is over? Uh, pull my other dagger and offhand it. <laughs> You're going to try to attack it. Yeah. Okay, roll to see if it hits. Okay, cool. This is the offhand, so this does not get uh, the strength bonus, so two. Okay, okay, cool. So, yes, that attack does land, and you are able to uh, actually strike the skull. Uh, however, however, you're going to take a little bit of fire damage. Oh, Be no. Because its flames are weak... You're only going to take 1d4 of fire damage. Wow. Okay. So, you are able to strike it, 
and you do uh. deal two damage to it. However, uh, you uh, it, it recoils. It feels it. But uh, you, in the process, burn your hand a little bit on the weakened flames of the bubble. Ugh. Yeah. All right. Anything else? Mm-hmm. All right. McJibbles, how you doing down there, buddy? Probably time to pop up again. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I already know the crystal is in uh, within a melee distance. Yes. What about the skull? Is it... Do I have to move, or is that also within melee? Distance? No, you're you're wielding a two-handed uh, warhammer at yes. this point. Yeah, you you can strike it. You can strike it. Your okay. range on that, I believe. Oh shit! What is the range of a, of a warhammer? And you said that warhammer is a D12 plus four. Yeah, because it's enchanted. Why not? Fuck you. Okay. <laughs> I'll take it. All right. You know what? Yeah, let's just say its range is about eh, a little over five feet. Sure. Go nuts. All right, so I want to pop off the water. Mm -hmm. I want to swing. Priority is the crystal. Mm -hmm. But let's see if we can do a, 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 a maybe a maybe maybe hit the skull on the back swing. Mm -hmm. Swing around, maybe not a four three sixty okay. or three. Okay. Here, here's what I'll allow play. you to do. I'll allow you to use your action to swing at the crystal. And then I'll let you take your bonus action to make a swing at the bubble with disadvantage. I'll take it. All right. Go ahead and do I, your swing on the crystal first. All right. That's a D12? Uh, no, you roll a D20 to see if it connects. Oh, D20. Yeah. <laughs> I used up all my good rolls. Fuck. So you do hit it. I'll you take do it. hit Fuck. it. As long as I hit it, I'll take uh, it. Where, are you going to try to hit it like right in where hey, those no, cracks plus are? Four. Oh, it's a nine, right? No, 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 no. The plus four is only to the damage, not to oh, on wait. hit. Fuck. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. It, so what, whatever whatever your strength modifier would have been to add to that, it would have hit regardless, so don't worry about that. Um, uh, are you going to try to uh, hit where you where you hit before? Yeah, same spot, same spot. In that All right, cool. So, yeah, it does connect. Uh, roll your d12 for uh, damage. <laughs> oh man, plus four, fuck. So that is oh, that's a, that's a twelve. That is a twelve. That's a fucking twelve. That is a twelve. So, uh, uh, uh give me one quick. Match that fucking crystal. That is that much. Yeah. Okay. So you managed to swing a, a sizable chunk out of it. Another one of those gongs uh, goes, but louder than the than the last time, and the waves that ripple out of it are multiple, and they're way higher. It, you can tell it felt that. So much so that it actually throws uh, Botak off balance for a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, you're, you, you made it hurt. You made it hurt, that's for sure. Cool. And then you want to take your bonus action to try to make another swing at the uh, at the bubble. Uh, after the Wait. bonus action, do I still get a free action? Nope. Uh, let's ju let's just say it eats up both of them. No. Because you're making a second attack. Nope. Just go underwater again. Prone. All right. Just going right underwater again. Yep. All right then. All right. And then next on the chopping block is the uh, bubble that uh, Botak just swung at. So uh, here's what's going on. It it noticed that the crystal took damage and it's mad its flames are bigger and brighter and its eyes are actually glowing red a little bit like or its eye sockets I should say it's fucking pissed and it is going to try to get you so what it's gonna do is it's going to try to fly into you and fly through the water to try to get you I'm gonna make it roll with disadvantage because of um, uh, it's trying to fly into the water at you because it's fucking pissed. So we'll see if it hits. Uh, hold on, let me do that again. Let me do one oh, more. Oh no, it's gonna bite your ass, you kibbles. I'm underwater, I'm good. Okay, cool. Uh, what's your AC, Mick Gibbles? Uh, 14. 14, okay, cool. So, yeah. So uh, what it does is it flies into the water after you. But here's the thing, right? Okay, what the fuck? Here's the thing, right? Its flames are still going under the water. Oh, fuck you. Because it's uh, mad and it's going for you. Uh, now, it misses. 
but the water's fucking hot at this point. Like the water around you is on the verge of boiling. boiling. So you're you're feeling the pressure, McGibbles. Uh, and it tries to get you, but it, it misses, and it doesn't stay in the water. It kind of like does like a swooping motion almost. So it like swoops in to try to catch you. You're too deep in the water though for it, and you can feel the heat coming off of it. So it swoops in, doesn't quite manage to reach you. Water's fucking hot, but it's uh kind of swooping in, and it's flying over to uh over here. So it kind of like swoops. Oh fuck! I'm trying to move it so y'all can see it. It kind of swoops in, misses, and then flies past the crystal. So now it's uh, kind of over here, still staring at you and still mad. So uh, yeah, that awesome. was its action that it took, uh, and it's it's laser focused on you right now. All right, Leo. What's your move? Yeah. Okay, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna blast blast the blast the one the fiery one. You're gonna blast the one that's going to try to uh, that's trying to hit McGibbles. Yes. Okay. Cool. Um, uh, roll if it hits. Roll for hit. Ooh. Ooh. All right, so here's what happens. Uh, you see, you 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 see McGibble smash the crystal, and you see the bubble. Look at him swoop in and miss, and McGibble dives under the water just to just to miss everything, just to uh, avoid it. Um, the bubble swoops past him, and you think perfect opportunity. It's laser focused on him. I can't miss this. So you thrust your wrist forward again, do an Eldritch blast. You miss, unfortunately. Um, your aim is just a bit off, especially at those kind of longer ranges. You're still not quite used to casting Eldritch Blast since you uh, refuse to use it ever. So, uh, unfortunately, you you cast the blast, but it just flies past him, and uh, you you do miss your your target. Is there anything else you wish to do? <laughs> Pardon? Uh, uh, thanks for trying. Oh. <laughs> Anything else you want to try? You still got your movement. Yeah. Uh, I'll move. I'll move a little, a little closer, kind of towards where the floppy one is. But sure. Go ahead and move your token. Not like right. Hold on. But not like right next to him. Next mm -hmm. to him, but just kind of close to him. Gotcha. So you're a little bit closer to him. All right. Yeah. Okay then. Okay then. Uh, speaking of, guess whose turn it is? Yep. So, floppy boy. Yep, the floppy boy. So I'm gonna try to mm. I'm gonna roll to see if he's able to succeed in repairing his wing. And yes, the wing is in fact fully repaired, and he begins to fly again. However, he is sopping wet, <laughs> so his flames aren't exactly as strong as they were when he is fully dried. Uh, but he did see that Eldritch Blast, and uh, he's going for you. So he's going to uh, lunge his body at you. So uh, we'll see if he hits. Okay, what's your AC again? 13. What, say that again? 13. 13, thank you. You cut out for a little sec, for a sec. All right, um... Yes, so he's a little bit off kilter considering that uh, he just uh, repaired his wing and he's still sopping wet. So uh, he lunges at you. However, you're able to take advantage of this uh, and his weakened state, and he's, he's slow, like he's moving sluggish. So you're able to, uh, which way do you want to hop? Do you want to hop to the left or hop to the right? Um, this way. All right, cool. So he flies he's past you. Yeah. He flies past you in this direction, and you uh, you dodge out of the way. He, do he misses you. And thankfully, he was he was uh, he was uh, just in the water because uh, you were not able to dodge as well as you did last time. So if his yeah. flames were at full power, you definitely would have gotten hit by his flames. It was that close. Okay. Anyway, yes. So that is uh, his action completed. Botok, your turn. Uh. Fuck it. I'm yeah. Fuck it. it. You're gonna do what? Please don't fuck gonna, the skulls. 
Fuck it. <laughs> I'm gonna skull fuck it. No, um, oh, no. I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw a dagger at uh, the skull. Alright. Oh, so now it's okay. <laughs> so what? It's okay. okay. <laughs> what do you mean now it's okay? Alright, uh, roll for roll to hit. It's within 20 feet, right? Uh, let's yeah. see. Let's see. No, five, it's not. Ten. If if each square is supposed to be five feet, five, ten, fifteen. Mm, all right, fine. I'll I'll let it hit. I'll let it. I'll let it. I'll let it go. <laughs> I'm, I'll I'm going off the squares here. I'll allow right. it. <laughs> Throw your fucking dice. Nice. All right then. Uh, and you know what? I'll also allow this. Uh, is throwing can throwing a dagger count as a sneak attack? Yes. Sure. Is it anything that like the attack must use finesse or ranged weapon? Sure. All right then. I'm I'm letting this be a, a sneak attack. So uh, go ahead. All right. So that is twelve. 12. Now, here's the thing. Here's I'm the daggerless. thing. Here's the thing. Yes, you are daggerless, but um, unfortunately, uh, the you do hit. You do hit, that's for sure. But the flames are they're they're weaker, but they're still powerful enough. And uh Leo, you you watch yeah. the dagger fly into it. The flames actually melt the dagger a little bit before it hits. So oh, it does It doesn't stick into the skull. It so, kind of bounces off of him, but because Botax fucking strong, he's able to deal a lot of damage just through brute force. So uh, I am going to say that he uh, that the bubble takes six damage instead of the full twelve because uh, the flames um, melted the blade a little bit. You still did damage. Good for I, you. Good job. I, I should know. The, the the blades are made of stone. It's the handle that's made of wood, though. So I get yeah, <laughs> yeah. I Rock's pretty easy to melt, honestly. Uh, okay. Anyway, uh, he has six damage. So yeah, he's down to that much health. Uh, he's recoiling. He's definitely hurting. There's a big old fucking crack in the back of his skull, and he's he's kind of wobbling with his flying because he's he just repaired his wing. His flames are weak. He's just he, you can tell he's not doing as well as he did at the beginning of the fight. Not nearly as well as his buddy is. He's trying to attack McGibbles. But uh, yeah, he's weak. Still alive though. Anyways, uh, zombie. Anything else you wish to do? Go prone. <laughs> go prone under the water? Oh, yeah. fuck, I'm taking no out of McJibble's book. All righty. <laughs> go prone under the water. All right, perfect. McGibbles. All right, let's go. What do you want to do, buddy? All right, uh, fuck. I'm wearing that crystal down. Let's pop up. Mm -hmm. uh, same spot. We're going to hit it the same spot. All right. Roll, this, roll for hit. It's oh, yeah. the same fucking roll. Yeah, it still hits. So, yeah. smack it again right in the same spot. It hits. Uh, roll D12? your D12, buddy. Ooh, plus and that was plus four? four? All right, yeah. that's a nine. McGibbles. Come on. Let me tell you something. So, you swing. You pop up. You're seeing what's going on. You take a mighty swing of this Warhammer. And you swing right in again, the same exact spot where you hit beforehand. The crystal shatters. And the largest waves come barreling out of the water. And the water's actually kind of rumbling a little bit as this happens. And you hear again a faint sort of scream come from deep within the forest. All this energy is flying out of where the crystal used to be. This grand explosion. So much so that uh, you guys are actually flo you are thrown back a little bit. Not the crystal itself. No, I'm talking McGibbles and Botak for that for that matter. Y'all are thrown back by the sheer force of this explosion. <laughs> and uh, uh, Leo, you're far enough away to where you definitely get like you feel the 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 shockwave, but you're not blown back. Like these guys were close enough to where they were blown back. And uh, the bubbles, uh, after uh, they they also get blown back by the crystal. And in that moment, they just fade into dust. Nowhere oh, yeah. to be seen ever again. So, Bubbles, Mis gone. Mission first, guys. Mission first. Bubbles gone. Crystal gone. McGibbles, the helmet you're wearing and the Warhammer you carry also fade into dust. 
and oh, ev fuck. and every weapon on the floor of the lake also just fades away. Aw. Now, right. on, also on that note, the fog lifts from the forest. Here, let me go ahead and uh, put back that forest music real quick. Um, what about the aurora borealis? Oh, you stopped noticing that like four turns ago. Oh, fair okay. Just, just eat some of those apples. You'll see it. <laughs> oh, and the water stops shimmering. Like everything that was vaguely magic about this area has is dissipating with the <laughs> banishment of the crystal. Nice. Uh. But yeah, good job, guys. You beat the crystal. You did it. That was fucking good. You did it. And Bo so. Dog composing himself was going to go back you to guys, the background. You guys distracted the fucking enemies while I went on the mission. That's how you do it. Yeah. Oh, and, uh, 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 um, um, yeah, everything vaguely magic about this area is fading away. The fog is lifting. Uh, the water's no longer shimmering. That Aurora Borealis that Botok, uh, found earlier doesn't, it's not happening anymore. He stopped noticing that a while ago. He was too focused on the mission. Bubbles have faded away. After I got knocked down, it was like gone. Just Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Um, all the weapons just sort of melt away, like fade away. Um, so now now where you stand is a uh, clear-ish uh, water lake. It's still it's still relatively shallow, um, but uh, do you would you like to check to see if you find anything? Do, do I find the dagger that I dropped in the water? Yes. Yes, you do. Yeah, okay. I'm yes, you do. That up immediately. Yes, you do. And I'm going to go. I mean, around. magic's gone. Yeah. Magic's gone. Yeah. That was yeah. rough. We can, we can do Better a check. All right. Yeah. And uh, would you guys like to uh, do anything before we wrap up? I'm putting my glove back on. Okay. I'm picking up the other dagger and inspecting it. Uh, mis miraculously enough, the dagger's fine. Mm. Must have been the influence of the magic of some degree. Don't have to make another one. That's good. Wait, so what's after this? Are we going back to the guild? So, in that moment, you hear... Like a slow clapping. And uh, out from the tree line... Oh, God. Why is, is he so big? <laughs> uh, sorry, he wasn't supposed to be that big. Bobbert comes walking out, and he's clapping. And he's, he's applauding you guys. He's like, good job, y'all. Y'all really succeeded over there. Woo, that that was some good ass fighting right there. McGibbles, I saw that tactic you did where you dove under the water to avoid the fire of the of the, of the flaming skull guys. That was, some, that was some good shit right there, brother. Hell yeah. And Leo, I didn't know you could do that kind of magic. That's amazing. Why don't you do that magic more often? And Botak, man, let me tell you. You got some real skill and some dagger throwing right there, buddy. Y'all, y'all were amazing. Woo! And he's like clapping and excited that you guys did such a good job. You were watching the whole time. Are you a fucking eternal? You couldn't have jumped in to help this, buddy? I'm pretty sure I almost No, died. no, 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 no. I just got here. I came here at the end just to yeah. uh, retrieve y'all after you completed your mission. Uh-huh. <laughs> I'm going to incite that. Hmm. You're going to incite that? All right, roll. Yeah. Roll. You notice nothing strange about his speech. He's telling the truth. Bodok nods mm -hmm. approvingly. All right. Anyways, I appreciate y'all. And y'all must have heard that ravenous scream that came after the uh, the crystal over there, over yonder, was, uh, was smashed into smithereens. Am I correct on that? Did y'all hear that? Did we hear that? <laughs> yes, you did. I just thought that was, yeah. those were my... I just thought that was my internal monologue. Internal monologue? Uh, I ain't yeah, never heard of no things. internal monologue, but... Uh, it wasn't the voices in my head. Okay, I guess we heard it. But y'all did notice. That's good. That's good. Yeah. That means the uh, the influence of said, uh, we'll say, angry forest god is finally subsided on this realm. Good job, y'all. Good job. Y'all Y'all did an amazing thing back there. And uh, my job Thank now... My job now is to uh, retrieve y'all and bring y'all back into the guild where y'all can rest up, have a nice cup of hot cocoa or coffee, d depending on what y'all want. Take a nice nap, take a hot bath, and just unwind after a job well done. And uh, y'all are allowed to keep whatever loot y'all happen to find during this mission. So, you know, bonus I'm perks. I'm taking an apple. <laughs> All right. So you run over to a tree and you pick one of the apples. And you take it with you. All right. Botox before, you know, 
is just going to go kneel later. down to the water and just take one last scoop of the water and drink <laughs> it. Just, just to be sure. Nothing is strange about the water. If anything, it tastes refreshing. Well, Leo, would you like to do anything before we uh, head back here. over yonder? Leo, grab one of them apples, man. I'm telling you. Grab I'm going to take the... the I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take the empty uh, healing potion that I had to mm -hmm. heal Leo and just scoop it into the water. Scoop a little bit of water in there? All right, all right. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah, that's just fine. fill it with water and just... Sure. Cork. So a little little vial full of uh, natural spring water. Let's let, label it as that. Uh, and then... Leo, what did you say you needed to do? You wanted to do? Oh, no, I was telling McGibbles I'm not taking an apple. All right, then. So, McGibbles, have you have you have one of those fancy apples? I, I put it as magic apple. I have it in my, my item bag. Okay. All right. I'm I'm ready for to later. Go. Maybe for Leo. Okay. She, Leo might change his mind. Okay. So, if that is if that is all uh, of y'all's looting that y'all wanted to do, I'm going to uh, go ahead and take us back to the guild, if, if y'all don't mind. And he, and he brings both of his hands back above his head, and he does one forceful last clap, and a bright flash of light engulfs all of y'all. And uh, at, at that moment, back at the guild. Back right probably, in the chapel. You could have probably done that for the crystal, just saying. And then uh, let me go ahead and uh, add our boy oh. back real quick. Oh. God damn it. It always it always crashes during the least important moments. Eh, whatever. <laughs> give me a sec. Give me a sec. Give me a sec. We'll end this here. We'll end this here in five minutes. Let me just uh, reload the page. Two McGibbles. Two McGibbles? Oh. What could that what did you do? Okay. Yeah. Two McGibbles. Anyway. One McGibble. One McGibble. His clone is dead. Redfish. Bluefish. Uh, McGibbles! All right, so all of y'all pop back into the, uh, here, I'm just gonna go ahead and delete this guy. All of y'all are back in the cathedral. Bobbert is sort of standing at the door of the cathedral and he goes, I appreciate y'all's help. Uh, now, y'all rest up here for a bit. I'm gonna go ahead and tackle some other guild business and uh, I'll be back I'll be back in no time with y'all's next uh, request from me and the guild at large. All right, have a wonderful night, everybody. And Bobbert uh, walks away, and you and as he walks away, you do hear the 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 main guild door open and shut, and that's it. Y'all are back at the guild. Mission successful. Well, gonna take the old man's advice. I'm gonna rest up. Awesome. Dude, me, I'll be in the quarters. McGibbles, can you move your token? Okay, good. All right, so that's it. That's the end of episode one. Wow, we did it. Or y'all did it. I was not surprised at how much trouble y'all had at the uh, at the puzzle. And that took about you three hours. The solution was, but I wasn't about to do it. <laughs> <laughs> the solution relied on one person. <laughs> yeah. And their willingness to do a thing. Yeah. yeah I'm, like, I'm like, what the fuck am I doing wrong? Like, what else can we you do? You didn't do anything wrong. I left this yeah. all up yeah. to uh, Leo over there. Awesome. Yeah, no, as soon as you're like, oh, it starts to glow when you lift up your hand, I was like, shit, I'm not <laughs> doing it. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, I'm a, this is oh. I'm a stomp on these carrots. And now I'm mad at McGibbles. <laughs> yeah, uh-huh. Even worse, because he won't leave my stupid carrots alone. He's not even hitting the carrots, he's at the turnips. Oh, boy. Oh, where's the carrots? Sorry. Fuck it, everything. Oh, let me go ahead and uh, play the proper music. I'm still playing the creepy forest music. Hang on. <laughs> look for some beer. Where's the beer? Uh, you look inside of the um, kitchen and you do find a large keg of mead that you notice wasn't there before. I'll take it. I assume that's all for me. Yeah. Cool. It's for the. It's for the guild. Uh, we could go to H E B get some more. Yeah. Yeah. He's a dwarf. He's gonna drink it all. You know it. Yes. <laughs> all right. And that's the end of the uh, of the first episode. So y'all <laughs> succeeded in your mission. Got a little bit of loot in the meantime, and all three of you have leveled up. Woo! Yeah. 
I'm gonna have to go look at my level two, baby. Let's go. Oh, it's for the win four. That's what it's all about. Woo! Anyway. Alrighty. Oh, so how did y'all? What did you? What did y'all think of that? That was great. You're yeah. a bastard. One hundred percent. Let's get. A, I, I I want y'all's response to this just as at the tail end of this recording, just to just to have. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So you know now, at the slightest inconvenience, I'm snatching that fucking glove off, just in case. Yeah. Just, yep. Just in case. You never yeah. know. You never oh, know. There you go. You there never you go. know. Fucking Leo. Yep. I'm snatching I that glove just off. Happy I didn't die session one. <laughs> but I hate that it was deja vu no, again of being I'm unconscious so in the water from session zero, basically. I'm happy that strat fucking worked. You guys focus on the enemies. I went for the mission. That shit worked. I loved it. That was pretty good. That was pretty good. I I do want to clarify. There were like eight different situations in this session that y'all deviated from what I expected you guys to do. And you know what? Right. Totally fine. It's totally right. fine with me. Yeah. 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 I expected McGibbles to immediately fight the suit of armor, though. That was funny. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hmm. I mean, that was all Leo's fault. Leo said it was empty. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> but I, no, but Leo, Jamian, Jamian, I was being conservative in the beginning. I'm like, you know what? Let's just I, chill. Let's see what I, happens. Oh, to, to be fair on Jamian's part, he is playing character with six, uh, six intellect. This, this is, is true. <laughs> this, this is, is true. <laughs> this should be expected. Oh man. I waited till Leo say it was empty. I was like, all right, free armor. There you go. Yeah. You saw it move and talk. But. It when was I grabbed empty, the branch, but... I didn't attack. Okay? You did. You did attack. No, no, no. I, I remember because I was just waiting. Then I let Leo go. And Leo's like, all right, it's fucking empty. And I'm like, all right, free armor. Let's rip it apart. And Uh-huh. That's, that's when all hell Then you got loose. your ass beat. Yeah, because fucking Leo. It's always fucking mm -hmm, Leo. Mm -hmm. Every it's time. always Leo. McGibbles yeah, never does anything wrong. <laughs> no, 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 it does. I literally hit the bushes for the rest of the fight. Yeah. I, I think I was the only one to do damage to the armor. Yeah, the armor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. you were. And, oh boy, I was like, oh no. I, I so you want to know what's really funny about this? Just to pull I, back I can the do curtain. a lot of damage, but the moment I, I'm a glass cannon, the moment it looks at me, I'm fucking yeah. Like the fucking skulls like knock me out in one hand. I'm like, oh. The moment, uh, oh, no. the moment. Uh, I, I put in a lot of moments for Leo to shine, just to pull back the curtain a little bit, because uh, uh, did you know, Kate, that mm -hmm. Shocking Hand deals bonus yep. damage if you do it against an enemy wearing metal armor? Oh, Eight. I knew. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I, I, I was good about you it. Have you have advantage against targets. Advantage, so pardon me. You have advantage. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, yeah, you you totally knew that. Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm pulling back the curtain a little bit just to make Jamie and more upset. <laughs> nice. Oh. Mm. So we're gonna have a long rest, oh, technically, and this level yes. up as well. So. Yes. Yes. Right. A long rest and a level up. All right. Let's. Yeah, I can level myself up pretty easily. It's a rogue. Um. Yeah. So yeah, the next. We're, so um, I'm gonna go ahead and end the recording here. That was a, yep. that was a good session.